We're live. Transmission. We're live on Twitch right now. Hello, Twitch. <laughs> Hello, Twitch. Put your clothes back Again. on. We're live. The Twitch Tastic Voyage. Hello. Hello. We're we're Dungeon Boys. Uh, what we're currently speaking to is likely anybody who clicks on this video on YouTube. This is our special two or three minutes before the D and D actually starts, where we uh, give you a second to get acclimated, accumulated, titillated, transmogrilated. Um, really, just get you. You're in a different location than usual. Why do I sound better? You sound different. Tell me. Yeah, you sound a little bit different. Well. Tell me in what way. You sound like you're in an empty room. Oh well. More echoey. More yeah. echoey. I, my my mouth is on the mic. How can I be more echoey? I've 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 noticed my voice sounding foolish on the on the podcast. So I got my little mic boom out, and now my you know my lips are all but wrapped around this microphone. I don't really know what else to do. Maybe that's the secret right there. I don't know. It doesn't sound bad. It just sounds different. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds to me like your audio is more directed at one spot. Which is, I think, just awkward coming through. Hmm. Well, normally the mic is a lot farther from my mouth. But maybe this is... My bad. Maybe this is more ideal. I don't know. Huh? I mean, it sounds fine. Like, it's not... Zencaster will take care of it. Yeah, Zencaster Audit hopefully will take care of it. That's my hope. Like, you guys sound definitely different than you do on the podcast in my ear. Like, all of you sound much lower quality right now than on the podcast. That is okay, cool. So that's what... Yeah, maybe it'll all kind of come together then. Maybe so. Hello, Disabled Animal. We're playing Dungeons & Dragons. You've, you've caught us right at the beginning of the stream where I take a moment to explain that during D&D, because we are recording not only a, t a Twitch stream, but also because we are recording a podcast, I do not uh, do an over amount of interaction with you chatty folks. We normally kind of treat this as you guys kind of tune in and enjoy uh, of course, I will read anything you type. You're welcome to type whatever you wish. I will read anything you type, um, and I may or may not respond at a certain point. But I just want to give you a heads up, just in case you know you see me look over here to the chat box, and then I look away as if you didn't say anything. I want you to know. Okay, now I can listen to the stream. <laughs> Thanks to a 30-second ad, yeah. I can't control the ads, baby. Only you can control the ads. I pay... Guys... I pay for YouTube Premium. Get your booze out now. Boo. Boo, yeah. yeah. I was watching YouTube with Caleb over the weekend, and two ads played in front of a, a YouTube video, and I wanted to kill myself. I hadn't seen. I hadn't. Se I hadn't seen a YouTube ad. I haven't seen a YouTube ad in years, <laughs> or I haven't had to watch one since I've been playing for YouTube. YouTube Premium. And it just, it just... So were you watching on your own YouTube account? No, I was watching... So I was at Caleb's house. So he was using his YouTube ah. account. And so his un, his un, unadorned YouTube account without the premium, it just made me think like, man, I, I feel so blessed to pay for myself to have this thing. <laughs> was it on his phone? No, it was on his TV. Oh. Why? I just use Adblock on my computer. Oh yeah, I guess a lot of people do use Adblocker. Yeah. Disabled Animal says, "Yeah, I got Adblocker since Chrome has a free one. I just use that on YouTube." Ha! It do the trick. Take that, people trying to make a living. Take that. <laughs> well, Keith, they also own Google, so I don't think it's much of an issue for them. No, yeah. They also have a couple of idiots out there paying for premium. That's true. No, I'm not talking about YouTube. I'm talking about the yeah. YouTuber. Oh. If you don't watch the ad, they can't make the money. Uh, that is a good point. Hey, gotcha. Feel bad, baby. Just kidding, disabled, disabled animal. Don't feel bad. But we're about to start playing D&D. &D. 
Hey Xenolith2, what's up? Welcome to the stream. We're about to play some D&D. &D. I'm going to be a little less interactive with chat from here on out. But of course, like I said, type whatever you wish. I will read whatever you type. Uh, if I don't respond, I apologize. But we are also recording a podcast in addition to the Twitch stuff. About to get down to Barovia Town. That's right. We're about to, we're about to dance on down to Barovia Town. Or die. Um... So let's go ahead and start this podcast. I'm going to start the recording here in Zencaster. Uh, hey, Mark. I remembered, but I guess you'll just ignore me as usual. Yeah, I always... Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> me, and, me and Bryce were talking about you the other day, Mark, and how we call you Mark, uh, which I have to believe is your name. Uh, he was watching you on the television. Were we? Is this not the right Mark? Is there a different Mark? This is that man's am. Oh, different Mark then. We weren't watching a Mark on TV. You're thinking oh, of war. We were oh. watching. We were watching War play Kingdom Hearts, which is oh, which okay, is yeah. not Mark. <laughs> Whatever. He says I've never seen. There's, there's, there's not enough Marks out there. Not enough. We can have one more. All right, let's go ahead and hit record. We'll recap last episode, and we're gonna play D and D for a couple hours. Sound good? I'm good. Okay. All good. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another trouser ripping episode of Dungeon Boys. <laughs> My name's Keith. I'm your DM. I'm Josh, playing the very much trousered Reginald uh, Fighter. Just rub it in, why don't you? Very much trousered. <laughs> I'm Bryce, <laughs> playing as Jericho, the Stealthy Ranger. I am Zenus playing as Errol Derman, the Baxi Rogue Cleric. Um, I guess I said tr like I was trying to think of something that wasn't what I normally say to start a podcast, and that was it. The words, tr yeah, yeah right the there. words trousers, trouser, and ripping came to mind. I think in my head it was like you're gonna be have so much fun you're gonna poop your pants so much that your pants rip. <laughs> I think it was my thought, but here's hoping. We should stop just short of that. Like we should approach that, yeah. But stop just. Before. Yeah, slam the brakes right before the seams give way on your poopy pants. Everybody, How about bridges breaching, huh? How about bridges breaching. Yeah, another rip roaring bridges breaching trouser ripping sock shooting. <laughs> Good time. If we're, going, if we're going with the the alliterative route, it should be. Um, Trouser tearing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trouser tearing, robe this ripping. Whole conversation <laughs> has gone off the rails. Trouser tearing, robe ripping. Uh, uh, what'd you, <laughs> what'd you say, Bryce? <laughs> Britches breaching. On a crazy pants, pants perforating, pa pants perforating, hat <sighs> holing, <laughs> sleeve slipping. All right, let's play D and D. Last week. Uh, or two weeks ago is the last time we played D&D &D, and some things happened uh, some things happened that the DM, the god of the world did not did not expect uh, so I'll go ahead and give us a little recap this week uh, hopefully audio is good for everybody, if you're watching the stream do let us know if we have any issues but from, um, I think we got everything kind of sorted, we've overcome <laughs> technical difficulties tonight, but the last time we played, we had just completed a boss fight of Baba Lissaga, the powerful magic lady who lived in the swamps, from whom you had stolen a magical gem that she had stolen from the winery, and your newfound were raven friends that live at the winery. You helped them, you stole their magic stone back so they can keep making wine, uh, and you Baba Ganusha's sister see I can't help but read the chat <laughs> uh, you help them out they're now making wine in exchange for helping them out uh, the leader there agreed to make Jerry uh, Jericho and Derman into were raven so you guys underwent a transformation into were ravenness that evening and just after that you fought Baba Lasaga murdered her and saved the day for a moment. <clears throat> the next morning, you went out back to Velaki to go back to 
<clears throat> maybe see what was going on with Irina Kolyana, who was a young lady that you escorted from Barovia to Velaki because Strahd was after her, uh, trying to, you know, snatch her up. You went to go back and check on her. You arrived. Erwin Martikov, the owner of the tavern in Velaki and son of the man who allowed you to become a were-raven, who may or may not also be a were-raven himself, uh, said, I've got, we've got, there's been some developments. I'm going to need your help with something. But first, we have to go to... Don't understand why my dogs decided it's time to bark. Um, but first, we're going to have to go to the Festival of the Blazing Sun. <laughs> Uh, the festival of the blazing sun. Your dogs are excited for the festival. I guess they're excited for the festival. That's all I do. Uh, so they go to you guys. Go to the festival. Some things happen. <laughs> Angus, shut <laughs> up, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> Angus, you know what? Mute button on your dogs. Golly, I need a mute button. They do. They do not make noise if the compu- if the mic is not on. They won't do it. They qualify as podcasters now, so that counts. Yeah, the hellhound sound for ambience from the dogs. <laughs> uh, so, you guys are at the festival. Some things go down. Dermon decides, you know what? I think I'm going to murder the mayor of this town real quick. In the middle of the festival, he does so. He thinks he's going to just harm the mayor and stop him from doing a dastardly deed. But what he does is just really disintegrate the guy. Uh, My intent was to give him a spook. But he... <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, he got spooked already. Yeah, you spooked stop him all the way down to Goblin Town. Uh, and so the town went crazy. Right before the town went crazy, Irwin and Irina... Or Irwin said, I'll meet you outside of town with Irina. Uh, we've we've got to discuss some things. Uh, but you ha- you guys have to leave. The three of you run away and escape the town, only murdering four out of the many guards that reside there. The town is a bustle with issues uh, and looking for you and alarms, and all the townspeople are very frightened, but you have escaped, and you are currently in some spooky woods heading west, away from Velaki. Does that pretty much clear it up? We heard howling and whatnot. Yes, and the very end of last time's episode, you heard some howling in the woods. Dang it, Zenus. Like that kid that asked about the homework. Nope, I remembered. <laughs> I distinctly I remember the purr of kittens or something like that, and something much less harmless. Mm-hmm. It was the purr of kittens, but it sounded like it was inside the mouth of large barking creatures. There's one. Yep, there's one right there. I roll constitution to crap my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and run. No. I'm not going to make you poop your pants on stream. Trouser tearing. A trouser tearing rip. Uh, of course... Uh, Bandex splitting. We forgot that one. <laughs> the... <laughs> the... Sorry. The weather, of course, is foggy, as always. It is nighttime, or it is actually dusk, and it is becoming nighttime. Um, and... As you guys are traveling west, you do hear some howling, and before you know it, as you're traveling west of Velaki uh, and through this spooky forest where every time you go deeper into the woods, uh, some, some bad things happen, before you know it, you are beset by three dire wolves. Now, us three boys were stealthing. Did they find us, or are you just... Giving us the old DM shaft. Um, do we remember our roles from the last stealth? I do not. I wrote mine down. Where did I put it? Uh, I don't intend to ever give anybody the DM shaft. I think I try to do a good job oh, no. without I didn't write it you. down, but I still had uh, Pass Without Trace is still active for Wolf Pursuit. I wrote that down. Okay, solid. Um, Pass Without Trace lasts for an hour, so... We have an hour minus however long it took us to get out of the city. Okay. Yeah. 30 seconds. It didn't. It took you probably a good 20, 20 minutes to get out of the city, I'd say. So the two of you still have Path Without Trace, so I'd say go ahead and roll another another stealth for passing through the woods here. Oh, yeah. You want me to roll as well? Um, if you're attempting to stealth that way, let's go ahead and let you roll. If this is DM, is If this is a DM shaft, I do apologize but I, I didn't remember that from last time. 
Uh, I got one. a 10. Plus 10, because of Pass Without Trace. Woo! I got a 7, plus 10, plus another 10. Alright, you guys are successfully <laughs> stealthing your way through this forest. Um, so, you, excuse me, you're not you're not beset by wolves. Instead, a pack of three dire wolves seems to be beset by you. Uh, you are passing through the through the woods here. It's extremely difficult terrain. The the trees are tight together. There's dead and decaying limbs on the ground. The leaves are crunchy at times, but also soggy and gross at times. Um, but you guys are very very adeptly passing through this forest without a trace but as you pass through the forest without a trace and you're approaching the western the western edge where you're headed uh, because it was Irwin who said you should follow the road west of Velaki until you get to an intersection at which point you'll turn right uh, and what else did he tell you did he tell you anything else he told us exactly how to get to it get to I forget did he tell you where you were going yeah. A tower of some yes. kind next to a lake. A tower in a lake or something? Yes. Um, so you know to go down the road and then make a right at an intersection that will lead you to a tower that is near Lake Baratok. Now, I've made an uh, I've made a map with a location marker attached. That is correct. It is a gold star. Uh, where have you done that? Oh, in the Discord? On, yeah, Discord. It should say updated map with objective marker. Ah, oh, Bryce boy, very. I see uh, nothing. Yes, it is. A, it's right above your last message in the Discord, Josh. Um, so you guys are passing through, and you notice when you get to when you get to the intersection, there are these three dire wolves that are just bursting out of the forest. You're looking out of the forest towards the intersection that you know you need to turn right at. Uh, and these dire wolves are running down the road and they also make the same right that you're about to make as you're passing through. Now you're moving a little bit slower because you're stealthing and going through difficult terrain, but you do see these three Ooh. very... No, I have an ability. Okay. Uh, Ranger, something about my group doesn't uh isn't slowed by moving through my favorite terrain which is forest all right cool so you aren't slowed down now of course these are still dire wolves and they are faster than you i believe they're even still faster than Derman. so they're 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 getting beyond you as they move but they do make that right turn uh as you look out of the forest and they are headed down the the path in the direction that you need to be traveling Will do so. I I pause only to ask if you will do anything with this information. Are you leaving the forest to hit the road and follow? Are you going to stay in the forest and kind of try to worm your way to the side of the road, despite its usually pretty frightening um, contents? Because there is thick forest all the way to where you're going, according to the map, except for the the narrow dirt path on the way there. I'd like so, to. Seems... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go for it. No, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, seeing seeing as how last time uh, everybody did this really cool like hand gestures and they were able to talk with each other and everything, Reginald don't know how to do all that. So he's he's just kind of like nudging whoever's closest to him just on the shoulder, just like a light punch, and he's just pointing ahead at the dire wolves like, ooh, 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 there it is. With that, I want to look back at. I want to look at Derman and kind of uh, sign to him that I think we should leave the uh, forest and get on the road mm. and see what he thinks. I sign back, uh, Yo Yo Dog. What up? Yeah, that's a groovy plan. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I sign back in a general agreement manner. And I, I say, I, I sign whatever a thieves can't sign there is for, what about the wolves? <laughs> which which actually comes out as, 
Hey man, what about the wolves, Daddy O? They're looking unchill. Uh, because that's just the thieves can't dialect. That's just how thieves can't kind of comes out. So in I'm Reginald's assigned. mind, he's kind of seeing this as like y'all are y'all are kind of like planning on the attack. I wanna I wanna take a couple steps, like slowly trying to like creep towards the the wolves as if to sneak up on them. Okay. So Reginald begins to kind of sneak sneak past you guys towards the wolves. Bryce, you were speaking. While traveling in your favorite terrain, uh, your group's travel is not slowed by difficult terrain. Gotcha. I trusted um, you. No, I'm just going to go along with whatever is going... Uh, actually, no. I'm going to gesture to the creeping uh, Reginald and then sign to Dermon, your choice. Um, so we're, we're stealthed. The wolves don't see us. The wolves right? do not see you. Okay, um, I nod to, uh, Jericho, and then I'm going to use my super fast movement times, <laughs> and I'm going to get up to one of the wolves, the one at the back, and I'm going to cast or inflict wounds on his butt. Okay, so we're going to enter combat. Yeah, these, these wolves are not very far away from you. They're, they're right there on the road as you're inside the forest here. Um, they're headed, headed in the in the northern direction around this road. Uh, what's that movement speed you can use? I'd say by from the edge of the forest to where they're at's a good 30 feet. Oh, I mean, I could make that without moving the super fast times then. Okay. All right, so let's roll initiative then. Right. Because we're about to attack some wolves, y'all. 16. 16 Will. let's let's go ahead and draw it out on here real quick um of course our anytime we have to draw anything out it usually takes some time so we're gonna draw a forest path here oh, do something but I didn't need to. why why would you do that just try moving the camera around uh, yeah while you while you're building this thing Keith I'm gonna take a minute to brag about Rachel a little bit he um he's gotten into like polymer clay and like crafting little things she made these dope mushroom earrings uh the other day but now she's gotten the idea right now currently she, as she sits beside me is making little hawaii marshmallow smiley things mm -hmm. but um she's also thinking about making like dice sets and d20 earrings and stuff. really cool nice you got a special in your life that likes Dungeons and Dragons, tell her to hit me up. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, I need to, I'm trying to remember the names of everybody's characters. All right, so, Reginald. I am Jericho. Moving out here. Um, we'll call that. Let's, let's put you guys. Wait, stop touching yourself. God dang. <laughs> Quit touching yourself. I'm touching you right now. All right, so that's about. Will be played by the five, letter 10, R 15. We're gonna call that f the square here for scale five feet, and it's let me get everybody's initiative rolls real quick, please, if you don't mind. I got a And what was Jericho's? Twelve. Twelve. All right, so gonna. Did I have an update? It looks like they might have gotten an update. Yeah. All right. Two luckies and an unlucky for the wolves. So Dermon initiated the sneak attack. Does that mean he going first? Uh, it, hey. it means that the initiative order will stay. The wolves will be surprised. So that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to go first. 
Um, but the wolves will not be able to act until you guys act. Do 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 do. Just gotta get initiative right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yes, yeah, so math the is hard. Is out, all over town. Oh, that's stinky. All over town. That's horrible. So yeah, we're dealing yeah, I saw with. John earlier today. He said there's like a big outage. Yeah, all like fourteen people don't have internet <laughs> right now. All th fourteen people in town, in our hometown. Uh, all right, guys. So initiative has begun. Actually, it will be Reginald who will go first here. Hmm. Alright, I am, mm, let's see, how, what's the distance, That's, the square is five, so, okay, we got some room here, um, we are in the tree line? Yeah, you, so yeah, so, on the south side of the line I drew is Spooky Forest. Okay, got it, so we are within the spook. Within the right, spook, I'm indeed. I'm gonna chuck my spear towards the most convenient spear chucking one. Uh, it is a, it's a 19 plus 10 to hit. 19 plus 10 will hit to hit. Good gravy, golly gosh. That's going to do it. Uh, uh, yeah, I get a crit from the 19 though. Oh, shoot. Looks like that's yeah. going to hit twice. The spear, the spear collides, slides back out and then returns. Um, that is, uh, 14 damage. 14 damage. Let me just quickly give you guys what these things are. You have just attacked wolf number one for 14 right. damage. So the spear flies in, passing directly into the chest, possibly even puncturing a lung of the first wolf, doing 14 points of damage. Uh, he does not... The spear remains stuck into the side of the wolf. It's buried so deep, uh, and blood you can see leaking out onto the ground. As as soon as you hit it, it lets out a painful "ow." All right. Poor attack guy. number dose. Uh, yep. Yeah, attack number dose. All right. I'm running in with my my choppy axe, and I'm gonna hit the same one for a fourteen. You're running in. Okay. One thing I should mention is that because this is spooky for us, I definitely should have given you some sort of disadvantage chucking a spear through there. Just know that the DM has reminded himself and attacks from here on projectiling out of the woods will be a little more difficult than the freebie I just gave uh, Reginald. Um, but that's on me. So you succeed. And now you're out there and you're going to go smack him? I almost smack him. Smack him up. It was a 14 to hit. A 14 will hit a wolf. Okay, all right, and it was a uh, whole six damage. What'd you hit him with again? Uh, going in with that great axe that I got, the tree chopper. Nice. Weed whacker. You come slamming down with the great axe uh, again in the side of the wolf, and as you collide with the very same wound that your spear created, uh, the spear falls out of the side of the wolf and blood begins gushing out of the side, and he gives you another, oh, and turns around and snarls at you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bonus action. I'm just gonna have my shield out. All right. I'm take out my shield. Shield up. He's ready. Here we go. It is now actually Jericho's turn. Uh, Reginald, you done? Uh, yeah. I think I'm all tapped out. Go for it. Oh, you do. Um, what time of day is it? It is dusk. The sun is go is about to be down. Okay, so my dark vision trait is not active at this time. Correct. Okay. Though it is quite dark in the forest already. But so it is. I mean, it's it's definitely dark in the forest, but it's it's reasonably well lit on the road, but getting less and less so. Oh, okay. Um. Either way. I'm going to run forwards 
Okay. And can I make it to a wolf with just my run? Um, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah, you can get all. You can you can get to wolf one or two. Okay, I can move forty feet on my first turn. Oh, then you can make it to all three. Okay, cool. I'm a uh, go to wolf two, I guess. Wolf two, you're going around the front of wolf one or to the back? To the back. All right. Up. You do it. Uh. I will swing my short sword. Okay. Swing it, brother. That is a critical one. Oh. So <laughs> I'm going to use my point of inspiration to reroll that. All right. <laughs> Good idea. That's a 16. That'll hit. That's how we use inspiration, folks. <laughs> that's a good That's a good use of it. That will hit. Way to turn it around. I was about to take that sword from you. All right, I get an extra D8 of damage on that. So that is a total of nine damage on that hit. Okay. Wolf number two gets hit for nine damage. Then next attack. That's another 16 to hit. That'll hit. And that's a... Thirteen damage on that one. Uh, thirteen damage. All right, all right, all right. Sneak attack bonus. Already? Is the wolf. huh? Wait, you're doing. Sorry, you've already applied the sneak attack bonus. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Is Wolf Two still alive? Wolf Two remains alive. Okay, then I'll use my extra attack. <laughs> all right. Extra attack time. That's a seventeen to hit. Right? That will 16. also hit. That is a five damage. No, six damage. Okay. And then I'm going to use a bonus action to crap. I'm going to use a bonus action to disengage. <laughs> I'm going to use a bonus action to crap. Um, so where are you going with your disengagement? Don't you have to move for that? Yeah, just... I went up to Wolf 2, so that was 30 feet of movement, right? Yeah. So I can drop back 10 feet? Sure. Sounds good. So you I'm, disengage. Yeah. Right, what I'm The way I picture this is you walk up behind Wolf 2, and you're trying to... If you can't kill it, you're trying to at least to maim it to where maybe you could slow it down. So I picture you running up behind him and taking your sword and slicing at one leg, and then putting your sword on the other leg and like trying to slice through a femoral artery or something back there. Uh, and then dropping back like, you know, a little gorilla attack and then drop back kind of deal. Um, so that's what happens. You go in, you give him a double slice, and you drop back. And the wolf howls in pain. There's even more blood on the ground of underneath wolf 2 than there was underneath wolf 1. Uh, Dermon, then, is your turn. Sweet. That's the end of it. All right. I'm going to go up to uh, wolf 1. All right, boss. As stated. And I'm going to cast upon him that old inflict of wounds. All right, you sprint up as as Reginald is just completing his axe attack. You sprint up and do con or conflict wounds, uh, inflict wounds upon the wolf. Yeah, going for that right hind quarter. Okay. It says make a melee spell attack against a creature you can reach. On a hit, the target takes three d10 necrotic damage. Melee up. So I'm gonna do that. Hang on, just one little wonderful second. Oh no. Just wait oh. one little old second. One little old second, y'all. I'm use my uh, inspiration for that one. <laughs> okay, uh, it's. I, I didn't for the initiative <laughs> roll because I was like, I oh, know that's fine, come what may. But I dropped my dice and it didn't roll; it just landed on a four, and I was like, no, <laughs> oh, don't do that. That's fine, and and in, in, inspire yourself. That's a nineteen. That will hit. Roll that damage, baby. Five. 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 Okay. Okay. That's 15. I gotta find a new surface to roll on. <laughs> it's not working. All right. Um, so 15, 15, damage. 15 damage. You grab that right rear leg and wither it to the point where the wolf can barely stand. Um, and with evil intent and anger in its eyes, it stares at the two of you, Reginald and Dermon, as if even with just the 
paltry bit of life it has left in its body, it's going to try to kill you with it. Um, but it is not looking good at all. But that means it is now wolf number three's turn. Wolf number three is going to turn right around. And he's going to sprint down here to Jericho. Doesn't it, or, doesn't it start back with us? No, it does not. Unless wolf number three. Does wolf number three go before Reginald? Wolf number three... Tr trust me on this. I'm, I'm sticking to the initiative order. <laughs> you guys have gotten to act. Bef you guys got your turns and surprised the wolves, so they're not going to act on that initiative order. So, yeah, excuse me. I need, to, I need to do wolf number one, not wolf number three. Wolf number one is going to attack with his hurt body. Um, so, yes. Wolf number one. Wolf number one, I guess I, I guess we really, I need to go over what happens with surprise because we always, I always goof that up. Wolf number one is going to turn around and do an attack uh, after the person who just grabbed his hiney cheek and tried to wither it away. He is going to turn around and try to bite Mr. Derman. So I'm going to roll, I'm going to roll for a bite. With a disadvantage. Because of the shield thingy? Shield thing. All right, rolling with disadvantage looks like oh, champ. uh tick 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 pop 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 eleven for your DC. It will not succeed. All right, so you turn around and as the wolf is lunging at the neck of what the of he who just attacked, uh, Reginald is able to bump his mouth out of the way with his shield because that other roll surely would have hit. Uh, so Reg, so Reginald Donk bumps bumps the mouth just away from colliding with Derman's body, and we are back. Give Reginald a, uh, a quick thank you. No problem. Reginald, it is now your turn. All right, I am. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm. I'm gonna swing with the axe again. I'm going in. Okay, do it. You know what? I cast inflict wounds with a non rubble component. I use a I use an axe. <laughs> uh, thirteen to hit. Thirteen will hit. Right. I'm gonna roll again and see if I get the second hit in. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, tw twenty three. Yeah. That'll do it. Okay. Right. So that's two right. hits. So the first one's got a twelve damage, and the second one's got a. 13 damage. That will be a gracious plenty to murder this wolf. Is there any right. particular way you wish to do it? Oh, I'm 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 going for the neck. All right. So the wolf turns around, you bop it off with the shield, and then you come swinging down on its neck with your axe and like a tree trunk or uh anything else that you need to cut in twain, this wolf becomes separate from his head. Whoosh. And those wolf, his gaping wolf mouth pff, flops to the ground, face up, with one last snap left in its body. Nice. All right. Can I do some of that bonus action style to go for a wolf number dose? Uh, yeah, I think so. You got, you'll have to move over there. I think they're not. Yeah. You you got five feet to go, but yes. I think I can make it. Yep. All right. Over there to wolf number two. So I'm just checking real quick. I haven't done that one in a while. I know I get the extra attack, but check real quick. Uh, I think it's just a. I think it's just a regular attack. Nothing special. So. All right. Okay. So it was a uh, god. Okay, it's a twenty-two to hit. Yeah, that'll 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 do it. <laughs> and seventeen damage, twelve plus five. Seventeen damage on wolf number two. Yikes, that's another murder. <laughs> wolf number two, you slice the head off of one wolf and then come back through, driving your axe through the rib cage of wolf number two as it had turned to harm Jericho. Uh, and you open that chest cavity up, and all its organs fall out on the ground. Well, that's just pretty. Hey, dismember me. Yeah. <laughs> um, it would have been that wolf's turn next. Uh, 
What is there anything else you're gonna do, Reginald? No, I am. I am turning towards Wolf Number Trace. All right. With murder upon the eyes, okay. I am ready. Okay. It actually would not have been with that Wolf's turn. It would have been Jericho's turn, and it is Jericho's turn. What will you do? Yay! You know, play with the uh, puppy play. Wolf two is dead. Wolf two is dead. Yeah, but sorry, both wolves, both those wolves down there, be dead. We, I guess I'm going. No, but uh, wolf three. Go for it. With your sword. I walk forward. Okay. And I swing. Yeah, swing my sword again. Swing upon him. That's a, that's a, that's a twenty three to hit. I say. Good gravy, that's gonna do it. Ooh, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a 14 damage. Uh, okay. Sounds good. Extra attack. Extra attack. That's an 8 to hit. That will not hit. I did not think so. Bonus action. <laughs> uh... I disengage. Alright, bonus action, you disengage. Where are you headed? Uh, I'm gonna drop back to the other side original, the right side original. Okay. You drop back to the right side of Reginald. Now, with Reginald being the not. Never mind. It is Dermon's turn. Hey, it's your boy. Uh, well, let's see. There's only one, one Mr. One Mr. Guy left. Um, has he been hit yet? No. Oh, uh, yes, he just got hit by Jericho. Okay. I'm gonna cast Toll the Dead upon him. Toll the Dead. So, let me get to that real quick. Um, okay, he needs to make a Wisdom Saving Throw. Wisdom Saving Throw? Wolves are not particularly wise. But actually not particularly unwise. He rolled an 18. Oh yeah, he saved. Oh, so he's possibly either too wise or too dumb to hear the bells. Perhaps both. Does he hear no bells, or he hears half the bells? Uh, he hear. Technically, uh, he hears the bells, but he just shrugs them off. All right. He's like, I'm a wolf. I've heard bells before. Bells, bells don't matter. <laughs> These bells. Also, bells. Bells are what little dogs wear on their necks. Uh, and speaking of necks, are you done, Dermon? I'm finished. Wolf number three is going to attack that red, that beefy Reginald neck that he sees. Um, so he's going to sprint over there and try to bite Reginald's neck. He's going to roll. Man, these wolves really blowing it. Not paying attention and rolling poorly except for on the wisdom. Uh, he's gonna definitely miss that neck. You raise your shield, and this dumb wolf that just lost his two bros just slams right into your shield, unable to do anything. Um, uh, that's about it. He's not gonna not stand his ground, so it's your turn, Reginald. What will you do with him? Alright, I am shoving him back with the shield, and I'm going in for the axe attack. Do it. Oh, uh, let's, let's see what we got here. Oh... All right, drop it. Don't be uh, sorry. It's a net 20. Uh-oh. It is a 5, a 4, and then a plus 5. So we got 14. Uh, That will hit. Oh, no, sorry. Of course, that's, you're doing the damage. 14. Yeah. 14. Eh, that's going to be... All right. I have taken. I have accounted for it. The wolf yet lives after fourteen damage. All right. Ooh. Yeah. That was just the one attack. Um. Try one more time. Uh. It is a ten to hit on this one. Uh. That will not hit actually. Okay. Uh. Other than that, just kind of hanging back, ready in that shield for the next attack. All right. The wolf is injured and bleeding, but not yet dead. It is now Jericho's turn. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna go again. Alright, jump in there with your sword. I don't feel like uh, going economics of switching to a crossbow. Okay. <laughs> Nobody uh, wants to play economics when to hit. that will hit. Thirteen. Still a lot of fourteen. Thirteen. A thirteen will also hit. Okay. A fourteen will also uh, hit. Six plus four is ten damage. A six plus four is what? Ten damage. <laughs> Sorry. Of course, I. I as I said that, I was like, well, I could do that math in my head. <laughs> I could have done the math. Uh, ten damage, one sword hit. You run past Reginald, seeing an opportunity as he the wolf bounces off the shield and uh, twice. Uh, you see that opportunity, run forward, and as he raises his paws up again for another lunge, you jam your sword deep into his chest as blood shoots out and runs down the front of your vestments. The wolf is dead on the end of your blade. <laughs> now he did run through my area. Do I get a do I get an attack of opportunity there? On the dead wolf? No, on Jericho. Uh if you'd like. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Just checking though. No. I mean you never know about these things. You can attack your party <laughs> members at any time. Just my... <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Everybody was talking at once. I believe I have the same lag trouble that you do with your wireless device uh, because I'm yeah. on the phone hotspot. That could be, but you know what? It's going to work for tonight. I'm just happy to be playing. It's been uh, it's been too long, guys. Also, I'm going to take this moment at the end of the combat for anybody who's watching the stream. I'm currently wearing my new Dungeon Boys t-shirt, which is available. What are you drinking out of? I'm not, I, I didn't bring my mug tonight. I don't, I don't have any sort of mug tonight, actually, which is a bummer, and I apologize. Um, no wonder the stream is off. Yep. No All mug, right. but it, it's gotta be. if you would like to purchase this Dungeon Boys shirt, you can go to the merch store. There is a link underneath the Twitch stream. Um, now, to be fair, they're not going to get that shirt. Yeah, not this one. They want that shirt. It costs extra. Yes. I'll wash it and send it to you. It's $100. Um, Some people like it better if you don't wash it, Keith. Uh, right? That's what I'm thinking. Uh, like that, that DM essence I'll, right there. I'll spit in it and send it to you. That's one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. That's a bargain. Right Combat there. is over. There are three dead wolves in the road. You are free to do as you please. All right. Reginald is just kind of shaking a little bit. He is just he is he is hanging on to that uh that shield and axe with a, a white knuckle grip. Okay. Hey, uh, Reginald. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't die this time. Well done. Hey. Hey, you know what? I didn't die. Yeah. Yeah. There, we're talking. <laughs> I want to go over. I want to start, like, kind of, like, nudging one of them with, with my foot. It's like, you know. So you, Rudolph. A little bit of last last gas ekes its way out of the the mouth of the wolf that you're kicking. <clears throat> a last exhale. Uh, it's definitely still dead, but a little bit of movement underneath your boot pushes some air out of its mouth. Reginald laughs like real quietly to himself. Sufficiently <laughs> <laughs> spooky for one night, day, or whatever. Um, Reggie, I wasn't paying attention, but are you okay? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm doing just fine. I mean, uh, last time we was up against these uh, wolfies here, we uh, oh, didn't have such a good time. I, uh, yeah, yeah, it wasn't such a good time. That is true. You should be proud of yourself. I think these are even a bit bigger than the ones we faced before. Oh, you think so? Look at me. I'm kicking it like a little bit harder. It, yeah, yeah, I think you might be right. It, you know, don't uh, curse to me. Maybe we, uh, maybe if there was three here, maybe they might be, might be some more. That is possible. I want to wear their skin as a disguise. Yeah, let's not take it too far now. I just, uh, I'm not real sure, like, dude. 
do I want to find more of these? Eradicate him off the world? Or do we just want to get out of here before more of them show up? I think it's best if we continue. But Reggie, trust me, whatever comes, we can handle it. Yeah, thank you right on that one. All right, then. Uh, let's get to it. All right, so you guys leaving the wolf bodies in the road and heading on? Yes, Do sir. we find anything of note upon these creatures? No, nothing of note. They're just these very, very black wolves that were presumably out to do evil. Uh, they they seem to have a particular aggressiveness about them. Though they didn't get a chance to harm you, they seemed as though they really wanted to. Uh, and they also seemed as though they were on a almost on a mission. They seemed like they were they had somewhere to go. They were walking in formation, and they were headed to a certain spot. It seemed like at least by the way that they were walking, they didn't seem to be like nose to the ground, kind of going wherever they may. They were headed down that road. What? Can I take a souvenir from Wolfie number one? If you wish. I'm going to grab a big old tooth off of that thing. All right. Cool. Just as a memento of the moment. Roll strength to do so. Okay. Could I, in seeing what he is doing, offer him a hand with... Uh, 21. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you still may if you wish. No, it's all right. It's, it's fine. All right, yeah. So you re- you reach into one of those dire wolf mouths and you pick out you yank a four inch canine tooth out of the mouth of one of the wolves that are dead on the ground. Oh, nice. All right, I just want to take that and just kind of pocket that. I I feel a bit more confident now. I'm I think I'm ready to ready to do some more damage next time I see these creatures. Okay. So, my dude, uh, Keith. Yep. You said, like, they look, they looked more aggressive than the average wolf, like, to us? Uh, they just looked like they wanted to kill you real bad. Um, I guess my main point was more that they seemed like they were headed to do something. Hey, did uh, one of you fellas happen to get the the right directions for where we're supposed to be going this tower? Oh, yeah. It's just up the road. All right. Down the road we go, or do we go back through the, uh, through the spooky woods? Let's, uh, let's stick to the road for now. Yes, I agree. All right. Down the road we go. All right, down, down the road, road, down the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. Um, you guys go walking down the road. It takes you a little while, and the sun is continuing to go down, and eventually it gets dark. Um, pretty, pretty dark for for a for a piece right after the sun goes down. You've traveled a couple miles at this point. You feel as though you must soon be arriving at the tower that you're headed for um and just as you break through a little clearing after traveling several miles the sun has gone completely down just as you break through a little clearing you can see that which you are approaching um i'm gonna pull up the picture for the people on the stream and then I'm going to deposit the picture in the discord for you guys um it's right there it is you approach well I guess I ought to read it huh probably juicy looking Excuse me, excuse me, and let me go find what I must read. You come to a cold mountain lake enclosed by a mist by misty woods and rocky bluffs. 
Thick fog creeps across the dark, still waters. The trail ends at a grass-covered causeway that stretches a hundred yards across the lake to a flat, marshy island with a stone tower on it. The, s the tower is old and decrepit, with collapsing scaffolds clinging to one side where a large gash has split the wall. Time-worn griffin statues, their wings and flanks covered with moss, perch atop buttresses that support the walls. And parked near the base of the tower, within sight of the entrance, is a barrel-topped wagon, spattered with mud. Uh, but you guys are at a distance right now, um, and as you approach, you look out across the lake, and you begin to see a little bit of light. A little bit of moonlight. And you see, creeping over the horizon... A big full moon. Only a night ago, did you under did you undergo a two of you undergo a ceremony that made you into were ravens, and so now against your will, maybe against your will, but now against your control and without you being able to do anything to stop it, uh, Derman and Jericho, you begin to feel a little bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> Not immediately, but you do begin to feel a little bit funny. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that Derman, he's not, like he's, he's down for it. Like he's the one he asked. He was seeking it out. So when he feels it coming on, he's kind of like, he's, he's sort of leaning into the curve as much as he can. Yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, and you guys are welcome to react in any way you want to as this transformation, um, you know, goes on. But slowly but surely, you begin to, f as the moon gets higher and higher in the sky, uh, you begin to feel a, a, a magical power coursing underneath your skin and through your veins. Uh, you can feel your bones begin to ache a little bit as they shorten. Uh, and draw into yourself uh, your body begins to be covered in feathers as you grow smaller and smaller and smaller until over the course of just a few seconds or close to a minute or so I guess uh, you bec the two of you become ravens standing on the ground next to Reginald they're overlooking this foggy lake as the full moon rises above you Oh, <laughs> yeah, that just happened right there. Sure did. Seen it with my own eyes. Um, so, what can we do in yeah. in this in this form? Right. Like, do you have like a stat block we can look at or something? Yes. So let's go ahead and while you're explaining this, uh, Jericho the bird is I recognize that bird eyes are on the sides of the head rather than the front facing. Mm -hmm. So his head is like kind of twitching and whipping all around trying to look at himself. And he seems disoriented by doing this. Okay. I like it. I like it. Because, yeah, you guys, it doesn't feel great the first time. It doesn't feel, uh... It doesn't f feel like it makes a ton of sense the first time. I, I imagine that Dermot is doing much the same, like, he, but he's, he's like trying to see himself and just looking all around at everything, but he's also trying to walk across, like, the ground, like, he's just, he's, like, moving, kind of like, he's got this anxious energy almost, so he's not really in control so much, he's just like, alright, I gotta, I gotta move and figure this out, so he's like, he's trying to walk as best as possible, and yeah. he's like just swinging his head all around. And... I dig it. Um, I need to take a photograph here of what is involved in the Were Raven transformation. There's some stuff that's on this stat block because there's no, I can't find an, an official Were Raven stat block because it's just kind of a Curse of Strahd thing. Um, so I'm going to throw you. A quick deal. So one thing that the Were Ravens that you guys have hung out with, um, they have multi attack. You guys will have multi attack only in Raven form. If that makes if well, I'm sure it makes sense for me to say those words, but yeah, that makes sense. 
Oop, I'm about to post that in the wrong Discord channel. All right. So you guys take a look at that. Um, part of being a were raven uh, shape changer, the were raven can use its action to polymorph into a raven humanoid hybrid, or into a raven, or back into its human form. Its statistics, other than its size, are the same in each form. Any equipment it's wearing or carrying, uh, this says, isn't transformed for the sake of us trying to not derail this podcast anymore. Uh, all of your stuff gets transformed with you. Um, and if your raven form dies, you revert to your human form. Uh, but you doesn't mean you're still alive. Um, I'm going to make that change too, just like the were ravens that you guys dealt with. If you die as a raven, you dead in real life. <laughs> no, that's what it means. Okay, gotcha. It's just saying, like, if if we were to kill a random raven and it turned out to be a were raven, it's it would just change back into a human. Okay. And still be gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mim so mimicry, the were raven can mimic simple sounds it has heard, such as a person whispering, a baby crying, or an animal chittering. A creature that hears the sounds can tell they are imitations with a successful wisdom check. Uh, Multi-attack, as a raven, you can make two attacks, you can make two beak attacks. Uh, your beak is a melee weapon attack, uh, you get... Um, We'll just treat it whatever your current stats are, just in case they're higher than what they the stat block says. Um, it'll do 1d4 uh, plus your modifiers. Piercing damage. Uh, if the target is humanoid, it must succeed on a constitution saving throw. Ooh, you can infect other people, it looks like. Ooh. Actually, no, you can't. I've made my own lore about this. No, you can't. That, do that doesn't apply here. <laughs> Suck it, D and D. That's what you you give us DMs the power, and they just don't want to let go. So Keith, do we use strength for the attack, or do we use dexterity? It uh, ooh, e, uh, oh, e, uh, uh, uh. I imagine based on this. Dexterity. Yeah, use your dex based on that. Use your when it comes to wear ravening. Use your dex. Yeah. Okay, cool. Question that they haven't asked, but I know it's going to come up. What's the movement speed? Uh, movement speed of a were raven, you can fly 50 feet. Your speed is 50 feet in raven forms. Cool beans. The Reginald just head in his hands. It's just He's just shaking his head and looking down, kind of dejected. I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> what is this done turned into a bunch of flappy birds? Now what am I supposed to do out here? <laughs> I I use mimicry to say flappy birds as he did, if possible. Uh yeah, you can say flappy flappy birds. It's kind of a higher pitch version. Me? Are you mocking me? Uh I just I am am I like conscious? Like is is that something we can understand him? Yeah, you can understand him. You just can't speak. Outright. Okay, so yeah, I say I, I mimic mocking. Right. Now they not turned into a bunch of birds, they turned into mocking birds, no less. <laughs> Listen, are you, you, you fellas okay? I mean, you're going to be all right. I'm going to fly up and land on his head. Okay. Yeah. You do it. I'll take that as a definite maybe. I mimic All my right. bite back to him. Say what? I mimic the words, the word all right back to you. Okay. After. Well, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know. After you. Yeah. After, uh, you. after a few minutes in this raven form, you guys begin to get the hang of it. Um. And you begin to understand how things work. You you begin to feel more natural in your raven body. You're you know none of you now have all the abilities that a raven would have. You don't. I'm not going to make you like learn to fly or anything. Any of those things. You you get it. You understand what it is. And now that you've made the transformation one time, um, you can make this transformation whenever you want. But I'm going to limit it for the time being. You can only do it once per long rest. 
So once you change back from now, you'll have to long rest before you can change again. But you'll be able to do it at will. Cool beans? Sounds, Sounds good. good. I like them beans. All right, so now, right. again, you currently stand on this causeway looking out towards the tower that you must be headed toward um, to await Erwin Martikov and Irina Kolyana. Do I feel as though I can revert back whenever I so choose? Yes, you do. You feel as though you can revert back whenever you so choose. Hey boys, you got yourself in a fine pickle here. Why don't you make yourselves useful? We're supposed to be looking for old what's his name round here. What? Fly off, see if you can't find him out there. Um, I want to make kind of a chicken scratching motion in his hair, and then go. Caw -caw! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be one of those days. I just that way. Head back in the hands. Just, I'm just done. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do actually want to fly off toward the tower. Um, okay. Can I? Uh, I'm a stealth in that direction. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can roll to be a stealthy raven. All right, I'm gonna roll to be a stealthy raven. <laughs> oh, that's he flies a... over and quietly goes. <laughs> that's an unnatural 20 that will do thank you for that roll Ooh. now what will you do over there I'm gonna just look around at it kind of I want to like just basically circle overhead see if I can see anything um see if I can see anything around the perimeter but my main goal is a window to enter into the premises oh, okay so Perception. All right, so when you no need to roll perception, you do a you do a good fly around of the building um to reveal its intricacies from the outside and the only opening from the outside that you can see to get into the tower is there is that scaffolding that I mentioned. Uh, I'll say it again. The tower is old and decrepit with collapsing scaffolds clinging to one side where a large gash has split the wall. Uh, so that's really the only entry point to the tower that you can see from flying around it, except for each... Um, trying to find the description of the tower because there are some arrow slits in the side of the tower and I want to figure out how large they are. At least arrow sized, I imagine. Yeah, at least arrow sized. I think they're probably going to be too large for your raven body. So I'm just going to say they're too large for your raven body. The only hole you see to get into this tower is the gash in the side of what looks like it could be the third floor? Uh, well, I I do it then. Uh, the arrow slits are too large for him to fit. Too in. small, too small. Too small, Bryce, <laughs> you know what I mean. You said it twice, I had to call you on it. <laughs> it, had, it had to be done. Had to call the DM out on it. Does it feel good? It's just like any other day, Keith. I know. I'm not a bro of reproach. <laughs> I am not. While while they're investigating arrow switch, which arrow slits, which may or may not be too large. Could it, you said there was a, a wagon covered in mud. Uh, there is a wagon with a round top, and it, it, it looks to be like it's been run through the mud. Can I can I go over and poke at that with my vision? So you're gonna make that hundred yard walk across the causeway to the tower? Oh, yeah, I thought it was a little bit closer now. Never mind. I mean, you can. Well, then, yeah, I do that. I mean, you, I'm just saying you can walk over there. I just want to make sure that's what you're doing. Okay, yeah, let's do that. All right. I'll, I'll start creeping my way that way. Okay. And, Bryce, what, were you in the process of doing anything? I am sitting on a man's head. Okay. All right, so... I'm going to go investigate them D&D rednecks. <laughs> While Reginald is walking... My muddy wagon... 
<laughs> but I got them big knobbies on my wagon, y'all. We get the horses pulling through the mud pit, and I'm saying, yeah. All right. Listen, two horsepower. <laughs> two, <laughs> two horsepower. Sometimes three if we're feeling froggy. So Dang. you three horse. You fly. Make sure I know exactly where you're at. Because again, we're playing the Curse of Straw. This isn't something I made up. I want to make sure everything looks the way it's supposed to. I will be back in 45 seconds. Okay. I can still hear it. I have my Bluetooth headset on, though. Gotcha. Perfect. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three, four, five. Hey, okay, uh, yep, sorry. I, I, I know where we're at. Go ahead. Zenith. I, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um... Are we gonna do like hybrid forms for the Were Raven or no? Um I think for your transformation we're I'm gonna do that as another thing that maybe you'll figure out. Right now it's just gonna be a binary, just Raven. Um, but as you guys transform, we'll allow you some extra as as you learn the learn the ropes, we'll allow you the, the hybrid stuff and the benefits that may come along with that. Cool. Um so, is, is it Michael? Yep, I'm about to read something to you. Time yeah. and the elements have all but destroyed this chamber of the tower. You, you, you feel as though you may be on the third floor of this place. Uh, time and elements have all but destroyed this chamber, leaving a gash in the northwest wall and slimy black mildew on the walls. The wooden floor seems to be completely rotted and has begun, begun to fall away in places. And at this point, it's quite dark in there. He's back. Um, he's back, man. So it's, it's the third floor. Is it? Does it look like there's more floors up above, or does it just go down? Uh, so in the middle of the room looks to be a five foot square hole in the floor and ceiling, uh, with a rusty chain near each corner. Uh, so it looks like there is a hole in the top. And the bottom that's about five foot uh, in diameter. Okay. Uh, well, I would like to go up, I suppose. Okay. So you fly up through the hole. Um, and we'll say you see some things. Unlike the level below, this room shows signs of recent habitation. And although the place reeks of mold and mildew, it has plenty of creature comforts, including a cozy bed, a desk with matching chair, bright tapestries, and a large iron stove with plenty of wood to feed it. Light enters through the arrow slits, as well as through dirt-caked windows with broken shutters. Other features of the room include a standing suit of armor and a wooden chest. Old wooden rafters bend under the weight of the tower roof, which has somehow remained intact. Mounted to the rafters are pulleys around which hang iron chains that support the tower that support the towers possible, which you have not seen, but it's already been queued up in this sentence because the way they write D and D modules is weird. Elevator platform. <laughs> um So as you land up there, we will return to Reginald, who will approach the wagon at the bottom. Yeah. Let me percept that thing. Reginald, you approach the wagon, uh, and you see the following. Under I see the both of us have Yeah, Reginald and Jericho, excuse me. Under layers of mud. This wagon sports a fresh coat of... <laughs> I was about to read it like the price is right. Under layers of mud, this wagon sports a fresh coat of purple paint, and its wheels have fancy gold trim. A brass lantern hangs from each corner, and red drapes cover a tombstone-shaped window on each side. A steel padlock secures the back door, hanging from which is a cheap wooden sign that reads, Keep out. Oh, so it's a pimp red <laughs> <laughs> Did you get all that, or what, were, was my rich reading voice too uh, too good? I think we got it. I think it was we got just it. good enough, Keith. Good. That's that's just good enough. That's what they call me. All right. Hmm. Can I? 
like you said, it's, it's still covered in mud and everything, right? Can I like uh, see if I can brush off some of the mud, see if I see any markings or anything that designates like where this came from? Uh, sure, you can brush off some of the mud, and when you do so, all you can see is that fresh coat of purple paint. You don't see any sort of markings um, beyond kind of the general wear and tear of a wagon that looks like it's been run through the mud a couple times. Okay. Now, it is a wagon. Is there anything attached to it? Like, was a horse pulling this? Uh, it looks as though it has the harnesses for horses to be attached in the front, but no horses appear to be attached. Okay. It, I want it has to, uh... it has yokes for two horses or whatever you call this. Ooh, it's a two horse power. Yeah. Uh, oh, I yeah. want to roll the old eyes up towards uh, towards Jericho. I mean, it did seem uh, peculiar to you. Uh, I'm gonna flap away from his head and turn back into a shifter human hybrid man okay roll let's roll in a um a athletics check just to see if you land on your feet see how cool you are right. just in case this transformation takes it out of you i wasn't planning to change on his head and jump yeah off. but visually this is gonna look cool maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> athletics yeah or acrobatic if not, athletics interesting we'll call it yeah, athletics what that's a 10. All right, you you go off his head. So what I'm picturing is you go, because you're a raven but not used to it, you you flew off his head but kind of stayed about at your own head level where it would normally be, uh, hoping that you would just appear standing on the ground again. You do so, and you do so almost gracefully, but you appear as a human with a little bit of a wobble back into the muddy ground. I'm good with that. Do I collapse <laughs> into the mud? No, you do not. Sweet, then I'm good with that. All uh, right, Jericho. Yeah. Good to see you back. <laughs> yeah, I heard what you said. It's It definitely looks a little strange. Hey, what's with the purple and all the fancy? I mean, it doesn't seem like it really fits in here in this place. Purple's normally a royal color, isn't it? Oh, so. Doesn't look any, uh, any royal establishment here. I suppose there'd be nothing wrong with taking a peek inside. We can get a glimpse through one of the windows. Hey, hey. See if I can take the old peeky peek. Yeah. Is there any crevasse in the curtains to peek through? Uh, yes. So you guys are going to roll maybe like an investigate through the windows? Yes, sir. Okay, roll a... Roll a per... Actually, roll a perception, excuse me, through the window. I'm sorry. Okay. Nine. The whole nine. I got 17. All right. E so both of you are looking through the window, though, right? A window-like gap, perhaps. Okay, so Reginald, you peek in there, and it's it's kind of a foggy window. You can't see much. It's dark. You don't have raven-imbued eye help. Um, so you're catching mostly... So this is like a stagecoach kind of wagon? Uh, yeah, kind of like a stagecoach kind of wagon, but it's, it's, it's hard all the way around. It's got a hard roof. It's got wooden walls. It's a, it's um, kind of like a circus wagon. Okay. You kind of picturing what I'm putting down there a little bit. So you can help what you're laying down. So not like a Oregon Trail stagecoach. Like it's it's. That'd be a covered wagon. Okay. Carriage. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you guys know what I mean. Um, you yeah, your picture. What you're seeing though is mostly moon reflecting off the window. It's you're finding it very hard to see in there, so you can't you can't make out much. It does look like um, there's some things in there, uh, but you can't really make out any of them. You can just kind of see shapes. Jericho instead. Jericho uses his elf eyes or his uh, shifter raven cool boy eyes. 
uh, to peek around in there, and he's able to block out the moon through the power of the raven and really peer into this wagon, and he sees kind of blotchy shapes a little bit. Uh, he can see that there's a bed area in there, like a, a bed where someone might sleep on the back, very back of this thing. There might be what looks like it could be a chest or a small table in there. Um, plenty of cooking implements. Uh, it looks like there almost could be a chicken hanging from a cage in the middle of the... Uh, it, it looks full, and it looks like a, maybe something that someone would live in as they were traveling around. But what catches your eye mostly is that in the bottom of the wagon, you see a square on the floor, and you feel like you could almost make out a little silver latch on that square in the middle of the floor. Well, I'm not getting a whole lot. You see anything? Yeah, it looks like somebody's been living in here. And there's something on the floor. It looks like a... maybe a hidden compartment. Uh, could be a trap door. You want to check on the underside and see if it goes all the way through? Yeah. On the side, you see. I'm stick my head up under there. Okay, so you stick your you stick your head under there. Roll another perception for me, Reginald. Woo! Uh, oh, it's a nineteen. You do spy all the evidence you need to say, "Yep, there's a trap door underneath this thing." Yep, there's a trap door underneath this thing. <laughs> oh, got it in one. <laughs> <laughs> you think we will you think we ought to look inside or underside first? I think uh, intruding in someone else's property is not comically just. Right, I'll you open the door. Whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so since I'm already like leaning down there, I want to see if I can like you know kind of kind of see if I can get the little trap door open. Okay. Uh, you reach up there and you do find that silver latch. It seems to be concealed a bit as if like if some he, this person were to run over someone with their wagon or someone were just like rolling under there for some reason, they might not notice it. But you looking around, you notice there is a trap door. And the latch is pretty easy. Is this a common occurrence that they have to design for? Uh, I'm just kind of wondering at this point. I don't know. But uh, you reach up there, fiddle with a little bit, and of course the trap door... You feel the latch open, and you're able to push up against the door, and it opens into the wagon, and we're going to cut back to Nerman at this point. Hello, is me. Hello, is me. Derman, what you do, Um, I want to go to the uh, desk and see if there are papers nearby. As a raven? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so let me see, let me see what it is that you see when I read what you see in here. Um, you're going towards the desk, you say? There are, there's blank paper on the desk. It looks as though someone has done a lot of writing. It looks like this desk is well used. There's ink that's been spilled a little bit on, around the edges. Uh, it looks as though there's some spent quills on the floor. Um, but there is nothing of note that you can read on the desk at this time. Okay. Um, Alright, well, I guess I'm gonna... Change into a wee old cat, Derman. Okay. And um, I want to I want to knock over the suit of armor. <laughs> okay. Um, roll that athletics check to see how effectively you retransform. Athletic. All right. That was a fourteen. Uh, you. You transform, and you as well land on the ground, a little bit unsure of your feet, but you don't fall over or anything, um, and you you feel as though you could definitely do that a lot better next time. Um, 
and you're going to go over there and knock over the suit of armor? Uh, he, well, what is it? What does the suit of armor look like? It looks like, um, let me see if it's in my appendix. I got a picture of it or something. Sometimes I get pictures of items in my appendix. Sounds like a very serious medical condition. Yeah, they get all stuck in there. Because I do. You get a little like buddy. Poke around in there. It's because I do much too much reading in my digestive tract. It's not in my appendix. I will have to find it elsewhere. Do, do, do. Is it really cool looking armor? Oh yeah, it's so cool. Um, oh. it's it is like a suit of knight's armor. It is shiny and silver and silvery metallic of sh 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 steel. Um, and it's a it's a full suit of armor. It's got the the pauldrons and the sleeves and the forearm covers and the breastplate and a helmet. Um that you can't really see into it's it's dark in there but there doesn't seem to be anything inside you know all the way down the legs to the booties it's just a big old suit of uh cool knight's armor uh, i don't want to knock it over but i do want to like poke at it with my finger okay you poke at it uh and it jostles a bit but it is it is it remains just standing there then I'm gonna hang on, hang on, hold up, hang on. <laughs> okay. Hanging. A thing is about to happen. I'm hanging. I'm hanging. We are dangling. Oh, we're not doing that. I'm dangling. Oh. I'm dangling and dangling. <laughs> All right, I've got some rope. I want to use the rope to like dangle. Set a makeshift little tripwire in front of this thing and then and then after I do that I'm gonna go mess with the chest that's in the okay so do I need to roll I like for that roll I survival I guess to put down a tripwire oh, and I will think cool. of a DC Oh, that's a 19. You successfully affix the tripwire to the rear leg of the desk, as well as to a piece of the the molding on the wall that seems to be hanging off to where you put it directly over the tops of this suit of armor's feet. So if it were to, I assume you're trying to, uh, if it tries to walk away from its current position, you'll know. Uh, yeah. So if it does try to lift up a foot, it looks like it, it might trip and fall. Dope. Yeah, I'm going to go to that chest. Okay. You go over to the chest, and... You go... Because remember what happened last time I opened yes. the chest? Um, <laughs> as you approach the chest, a lavender aroma emanates from its wooden bowels. But the chest does not look locked. Uh, Better than the aroma em emanating from my bowels. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might like that one. Too. I did. I love bowel humor. Yeah. Anybody who uh, likes to watch this stream or podcast, you know I like duty humor. Sorry, go ahead. I want to roll investigation on the chest. Okay, boss boy. Roll it. That is the mighty uh, 13. You investigate the chest. And to your uh, investigation, you do not see anything off or dastardly about it. Cool. I... The most dastardly thing is, it's a chest. Yep, it is a chest. I open it. Alright, you open the chest. You grab each side slowly. And as you open it and the lid comes up, you hear a click. 
And at first, you're very frightened because you remember what happened last time that happened. But then, after a second, you realize, oh, that was just a latch. And you continue to push the chest open. And what you see inside, you'll have to find out in a second because we're going to cut back to... Uh, oh, <laughs> to Josh and Bryce down there at the wagon. Uh, but there was no trap. You, it did not harm you when you opened the chest. Back yeah. to Jericho and Reginald. Reginald has just opened the trap door to the wagon, and he has gone inside. And Reginald doesn't even take a professor... Of perception to see what you see next. All right. What you see is that on the inside of the handle of the door, you see a wire looped around the handle, and you see that that wire is connected to a flask of some sort that's hanging from the wagon ceiling right by the door. And then your eye is drawn from that single bottle to what looks like around a hundred more bottles hung all the way around the edges of this wagon ceiling uh, and tied to wire. And it looks as though you stumbled upon a breasty trap. Is that anything like a booby trap? It's just like a booby trap. (laughs) Hey, yo. Jericho, don't, don't, don't you dare. Open the door. It seems to be some kind of a trap that's uh, hooked up to the side of that. Don't open the door. It's a bad idea. But you, hey, come come around to the little hole in the floor. You take a look for yourself. I suppose if I'm invited in, I might as well. <laughs> I'm gonna. I like it. Jimmy up in that <laughs> trap door. Like a vampire. Ugh. Um, so yeah, inside the wagon, you see a wooden trunk, you see a narrow wardrobe, you see, um, a liar sitting in the corner. It looks like it, that looks it ha- like it has golden strings on it. You see a sculpted wooden oh. cage holding a chicken and a silver ewer with five chicken eggs in it and a tiny wooden box. Um, chicken alive. yeah, the chicken is alive, but... You as well as soon as you as soon as you come in through the trap door, you come in you know at a regular speed, and then whenever you see that trap, I mean you're a you're a ranger, you've been around the block, you've seen a few of these th- things like these before probably sneaking around and whatnot. Uh, this is a this is a booby trap. It's a big boom boom booby trap that you see that he's pointing out to you. All this to protect that chicken in there. Or could be something else. Uh, oh, maybe. maybe. Reginald, we're going to have to be very, very careful in here. He might be right. Or the trunk. You think any of this could be. But we're outside where we can take a look at it a little more securely. Uh, I think we're going to have to check everything before it moves, ever. Right. I'm going to let you do the check. you got better checking eyes than what I've got. I'm just, I'm the smashing fellow. Remember that, right? I will take any assistance I can get. Two or four, four eyes are better than two that I'll have. Alright. I'll give him the big wink. Okay. Real quick, as you do speak this and kind of come into the wagon and stand, or kind of, you know, stand as much as you can in this wagon and look around, roll perception for me real quick. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, 21. Uh, Jericho, again, your keen raven eyes from your periphery as you begin to look around the wagon you can tell that even the shifting weight of your head and certainly the shifting weight of Reginald's head and shoulders as he looks around the wagon you can tell that this uh this flask that's hanging above the door is pretty lightly affixed and is it possibly if you guys move to 
too quickly and they're in danger of falling. But as you peruse the other hundreds of bottles around the edge, those seem to be very tightly affixed. They don't seem to be wobbling very much. It's just that one above the door that seems like it might cause you a problem. All right. Uh, original. Mm. I need you to be... Well, actually, I'm going to give you a choice. Do you want to sit here and try and be as still as possible while I try and disarm that bottle over the door? Or would you like to try and go outside in case I screw up? You know what? In for a penny, in for a pound. I'm going to stay here with you and the chicken and the rest of the loot. <laughs> Fantastic. I'll take out my sword. Your sword? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Reg Reginald just has the biggest grin. Like, yes, this is a perfect idea. Yes. Oh man. All right. So you're going to disarm the trap, maybe. I hope I did not misuse my uh, inspiration earlier. I, I guess if <laughs> all is about to go bad, I could borrow. Wait, 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 wait. Just a a, a quick recap. <laughs> A player can give a point of inspiration yes, to another a player. player. I have a point. Okay. This may. I am going to give that point. That was the wink I gave earlier. Gotcha. That was me giving that point of inspiration. I'm going to tell you this is going to be Sans' point of inspira inspiration. This is, though I did not know whether you would approach this moment this evening, this will be a crucial action we are about to undertake. <laughs> oh, that would be fine. Uh, but with the point of inspiration, the likelihood of your success increases twofold. And so if you succeed, I'll tell you what could have happened had you not. Fantastic. I imagine a fiery conflagration. Yeah, something like that. That's what I'm sure Jericho is imagining. Guys. Yeah. I think we lost Sherry Co. Oh, poopy. Oh, no. What the? What the? He'll be back. What the you heck? Know what? You know what? It was the explosion. <laughs> yeah, he tried it without telling me. And he blew up. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it was. Like, tiny little mushroom cloud way off in the distance. Yep. Yep. Here it goes. Him and the chicken. Jericho tried it without telling me, and he blew up. So let's let's see if we can't figure out what happened to him. Well, oh, wait a minute. I am back. All right, cool, good. What happened? There you go. I don't know. It just said lost connection to server. Oh. Oh. All right. Well, hopefully we didn't lose completely the um. Hopefully we didn't lose what do you call it, the whatever history you had on this one anyway. But anyway, we'll have it on YouTube, so we got the backup. Okay, so good. Another reason we stream. So it was at the perfect moment where we thought, okay, maybe he tried to, to pick the lock or whatever, and this happened like a little tiny mushroom cloud in the distance, just catching you up. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to attempt that old disarm. All right. Roll a dexterity check as you raise your ginger hands towards the bottle. All right. That first one is an 18 plus 4 is a 22. Okay, you are successful. You're able to reach up and grab the gingerly hung cord, uh, take the flask off of it, and it smells like absolute just just fiery f fire piss is what this bottle of stuff smells like. Um, why don't you roll like a uh, investigation or some sort of... What's, roll survival maybe to see if you can tell what this stuff is. That is a fifteen. Um, it is a fifteen. You you recognize the smell. You've been around the lock block a little bit. You recognize the smell of this stuff as being a bottle of alchemist's fire. A very explosive cocktail of boom boom and bang bang, if you know what I'm saying. Boom juice. Boom juice. I'm going to see if I can't give you some... Um, you guys love to collect everything anyway. So I'm going to see if I can't give you some stats on it. 
All right, Alchemist Fire. It is a consumable adventuring gear. It's one d four's worth of damage. And well, it's got a dexterity save. All right. So you now have a bottle of that if you want it, Jericho. I do. As well as a hundred more around the edge of this thing. <laughs> would you say that me trying to take one more off would cause the rest to fall? Or does it look like I can uh, attempt them without causing much issue it looks like you could attempt them without causing much issue it looks like based on your disarming of this trap it looks like this one bottle was meant to fall and explode causing the rest of them to catch fire it doesn't look like they were all strung to one line to fall down in in concert you know it looks like just they were hoping that the one explosion would blow up the rest of them all right then i would like to take five more all right you may take five more uh, Reginald. Yeah. I, I think I recognize these. This is a alchemist fire. It's a it's like an explosive liquid. You think uh you think Damon would want some? Well yeah, we without a doubt. You, you think we ought to take uh, take some of them with us? Yeah, just Grab him a handful and whatever you want for yourself. Alright. I'll grab a handful plus whatever I want. So, um, let's grab, uh, let's grab eight of them. I'm gonna go ahead and lower that chicken through the trap door. Okay. Well, I was, <laughs> that was going to be my next thing. I was going to point at the chicken <laughs> and ask if we could identify that. It is a chicken. Nice. Uh, I'm just going to be exploring the rest of this if you want to cut back to Dermot. Yep, I am. Sorry, I was just fiddling with something on the stream. Um, let's cut back to Dermot. Real quick, tell me what containers were in this. You said a chest yeah. or a trunk? There were a wooden trunk, a narrow wardrobe. Uh, there was a lyre that looked like it had golden strings on it, a sculpted wooden cage holding a chicken, and a tiny wooden box. And we'll cut back to Dermont. Dermont. Yo. What is it you will do? Uh, what's in the oh, chest? Oh, yeah, what's here? in the chest? Excuse me. What's in the box? <laughs> never yeah. never could this be a more accurate uh, reference than for us to yell what's in the box because it's a box. you see a severed head in the box. In the box. Uh, in the box is a severed head and its flesh has a waxy complexion. All right. Uh, I'm going to need you to continue. Yeah. That's all I got for you. It's just a severed head with a waxy complexion. Nobody we know. Yeah, is, is anybody I recognize? You have or? never met this. Roll in a little, roll a little investigation, I guess. But you have never met. I'll go ahead and tell you, you've never met this person. That's the twenty-five, my dude. The twenty-five. This head bears a cultural and racial uh, similarity with the Vistani people that you have spied on from across the road while Jericho spoke to them as well as the Vistani man who invited you to this godforsaken hellhole. But does not bear a resemblance to that man, just a resemblance culturally. Um, Looks like he could be I, a Vistani. I want to touch the head. You touch the head, and it feels like a waxy head. Amazing. It does. It feels like a head. I'm, I'm gonna try to take it. Okay. <laughs> I like the conflict in yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna try to take it. Uh, you're gonna you try to take the head, and the head. It comes with you. When you grab. It. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, as if by as if by no choice of its own. <laughs> <laughs> I put it back. <laughs> and I'm gonna walk over to the hole and try to climb my way well, I have climbing speed. I'm just gonna climb my way down to the the floor below the one I came in on. Sorry, guys. Oh, I'm going to switch my rope first. I want to take my rope with me. Okay, so no more trap. Yeah, I just had to pee into the mic real quick. Um, That's flavor. Could you imagine the kind of chaotic energy someone would have and, pr and put into the world if they were to pee into a microphone? <laughs> That's a person who can't be stopped. I mean, I'm sure there's a market for it somewhere, but yeah. you really got to dig. Some of those ASM artists out there. Um, all right, so... Huh? Um, you may hear the cackling of Rachel beside me. I and do. that is only because mere seconds before you said ASM artist, she turned to me from her clay uh, uh, polymer working, and she said ASM artist. Mm. Yep. And then went back to work. That's what they call themselves, actually. It's a real term. I don't, I'm not a big into ASMR, but they do call themselves that. Um, so... Learned a thing today. Yep. How about that? So if you want to have your ears tickled, find an ASM artist. You hop on really one of those rusty chains, Dermon, and you go shimmying on down. You pass by the third floor, which is completely has completely dilapidated floor. The wood is just completely grimed up, falling, falling, falling. But then you go to uh, the second floor, on which you see... Dust and cobwebs fill this otherwise empty room, the wooden floor of which is badly rotted and partially collapsed. Okay. As you hang from the chain. Alright. Uh, is there anything in this room? Uh, the wooden floor of which is badly rotted and partially collapsed, dust and cobwebs fill this otherwise empty room. Uh, so, so, so. Okay, um... Sorry. No, it's okay. No, I wasn't trying to be sassy. I was really going back to read. No, I gotcha. Um, and is there, there's another, there's more down? Or yes, is that the bottom floor lies beneath yeah. you. I'm gonna head down. Okay. And then what, what do I, what do mine eyes spot? Sorry, we lost Bryce again, but I was just trying to tell him, try to get back in. Um, while we deal with you what do your eyes see in the first floor the flagstone floor is strewn with debris and a few old crates stand near the east wall a torn curtain to the south partially obscures the tower vestibule a five foot square indentation in the center of the floor contains uh what looks to be the the uh elevator that would be operated by the pulleys you saw above and the chains that you're climbing down um standing next to those chains and to what looks like it could be an elevator are four tall clay statues uh what are they of my man hmm made of clay yeah clay statues no, I mean, like, what what do they depict? Um, they just look like clay statues of people, I guess. Um, just like four men made of clay. Regal, regal looking men, I suppose. But not too regal. Hello. Hey, we can hear you. He's back. Yeah, I'm all to Under the guise of nope, I can hear you all. Alright, good, good, good. Good, glad to have you back. Z Dermon has just made it to the bottom floor where he has found four clay statues that are depict regular kind of dudes, I guess, like uh you know, dudes that you would find around, I guess. Just people, men. Uh who have hands on the chains that he is currently climbing down. Um looks a little bit like these statues in some way might operate this elevator. Cool. Is there... 
All right. Is there anything? Uh, is there anything else in the room, or is it just the uh, the things? It's really just the bottom floor and these these clay statues. Uh, there's a bunch of crates. No, there are there's there are several crates that that kind of litter the floor of this room as well. Several crates. Um. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna start picking my way through the crates, I guess. Okay. To save time, as you pop the lids on those crates, you realize that within them only lie more cobwebs. They be's empty crates, my man. Okay, well then I'm gonna head, uh, I'm gonna head back up and out. All right, boss. Uh, you climb up to the third floor. Uh, and let me ask a question of myself. You're gonna w- walk from the chains to the slit in the window, or to the slit in the wall, the crack in the wall that you came in. Uh, yep. Now I must ask you a question. What is this? How much do you weigh? <laughs> These are always an interesting let questions. Me, let me look it up. Uh, really, really quick. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Really the DM gets asked those uh, bowel clenching <laughs> questions like, "What did the enemy eat three days ago?" and <laughs> "What color is the sky today?" Yeah. Blood red. Blood. Oh, he'll be fine. Man. He'll be all good. The sky is a s- silvery color tonight. Well, I'm a little bit taller than humans. Relatively slender. So, uh, if he is... Do you weigh more than 50 pounds? Yeah, I would say <laughs> he probably weighs like 75 to 90 pounds, being being old cat man. All right, roll a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> that's uh, that's old twenty six. Well, as you step off of the chain, the the wooden floor beneath you gives way, cracks and falls beneath you, but your cat light reflexes allow you to turn right back around and grab on to the chain. No sir, not today. Ready to move. So that's that sucks. Yep, <laughs> it does suck. I should so have mentioned at the you... bottom there was definitely a door. There was a vestibule and a door at the bottom. Uh, I should have mentioned that. I'm, I'm going to climb uh, back it down. Okay, you climb back it down. Then I'm gonna go through the door. All right, so you find the door, and at this door, you grab on to the door. And it is a door that is made of iron. Um, and it doesn't look like it has any visible handles on it uh, or hinges. But you push on it and the door does open and it creaks open. Uh, and you find yourself looking directly at the wagon that your buddies are hanging out in. Cool. Well, I say I approached them. All right, you approach them, and we will... Do you speak to them? If you speak to them, do that. If not, I'm going to cut back to them. Inside the wagon. Um, um, let me see. Well, if, can I, I can see that they're in the wagon, or do I just see that there's a wagon? No, you can see the wagon moving around. You can tell there's, that's where they're at. Okay. Um, I just kind of go up and, and knock on the side of it a little bit gently and be like, Hello? Anybody in there? If the wagon is a rocking, <laughs> be careful, back. there might be explosives. That's all I do. And That's everything. Okay. I could, I could kind of see this progressing. Like, I've dropped down out of the little hatch on the bottom, and uh, Jericho is, like, carefully lowering a chicken towards me. I remember that's the last thing we're trying to do is get the chicken out the trap door. Right. I heard the tap. The tap? I, I'm asking Keith if I heard Zena's tap on the window. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you heard him. You heard him. All right. Cool. Hey, uh, Reginald. Uh, hey. Dermin's out there. Oh, hi, Dermin. 
I Very suppose with, without the uh, the trap bottle, I can just open the door for him. Is there uh, is just the one trap, right? I believe so. Yeah, based one on based on your looking around, it didn't look like there was any other trap. I carefully open the door. You open the door. And the little piece of wire that would have dropped the alchemist fire and destroyed the wagon, uh, it triggers, but nothing's there to drop. So the door just opens, and there is a Derman standing before you. Oh, hey, Derman, we found a chicken. Yes, I can see that. What are you doing now? Yeah, uh, getting the chicken out. Hey, hey, you won't give us a hand, do you? Um, what are you doing? Get the chicken out of here. I mean, what's it look like? <laughs> do you need help to remove the chicken, though? Is it a special chicken? I, I mean, it might be in a heavy kind of cage. I, you know, hey, here, here. I want, I want to reach up and, and grab two of the, uh, the alchemist's fire and, and just hand them to him. Here. It's a bunch of these in here. See what you can make it in. Um, do do I need to roll to recognize? Uh, no. Now that you guys have kind of investigated that, you don't have to roll. You recognize? Oh, by the way, it don't drop that. It's an alchemist fire. There you go. Perfect. There's from a trunk in the, the back. Wagon. From inside the wagon, you can hear. Don't drop the chicken either. Not too sure about that one. Hey, you know, Reginald, I didn't think about it before, but now that the door's open, I think it would probably be easier to remove the chicken via the door. That is true. Also, German, there is a trunk in the back, as well as a wardrobe. Uh, I feel some kind of way about looking in it, but considering the thing was booby-tripped, I don't feel that strongly about it, so I'm going to go open one of them. That's fair with you. So, um, if I'm to understand you correctly, this alchemist fire, as you put it, is explosive? Yeah, yes, rather potent. Good. And Derman is excited. <laughs> what, one thing that's... There's about, a uh, hundred of them. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Yeah, we see. Yeah, sorry. One, I was just about to say one thing about the Alchemist Fire is that it's not like a Molotov cocktail. It is does not need, uh, doesn't need fire to, it doesn't need anything lit to blow it up. Just impact and, uh, touching the air, <laughs> blows it up. That'll wait. Sweet. I'm gonna go open a trunk. All right, you I'm go. And open the trunk. Inside the trunk, my saucy dame, is, uh, this trunk is covered with claw marks, but when you open it, you see within a battle axe, a flail, a morning star, a light crossbow, and ten crossbow bolts that look as though they have been silvered. Ooh. 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 Grab me that crossbow and bolts. All right, there you go. You got a light crossbow and ten silvered crossbow bolts. Uh, can I investigate the bolts? Do they do they speak to me of their meta ness? <laughs> um, let me remind myself what a silvered crossbow bolt does. Helps against different types of immunity. Yeah. I think you And such. Hey, uh, Reginald, I know you've been recently coming into a lot of rather impressive weaponry, but there's some other stuff in here if you want to check it out. I'll, Demon, I'll did you find head. anything interesting in the tower? Oh, there was just a head. Not much else. Nothing else? None that I could find. Though, to be fair, I, think... I did not really look all that much. 
nothing shiny that would benefit a warrior type person who aids us quite often. No, nothing at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I've, I've got the chicken in the cage, like, tucked up under one arm. I'm leaning back inside the door to the, to the, uh, the wagon. I said it was something else today. Oh, you said this holy fam. Oh, well, there were four statues and a suit of armor in there next to the head. The actual dead head that I found. Hey, did you take it? No, almost. But I left it there. Good man, good man. <laughs> uh, it wasn't. Can I, can I size up Reginald and compare his size to the size of the suit of armor? Yeah. I'd do that. Then do the roll. Uh no, hi. This this suit of armor that you've seen looks it looked like it would it it would belong on a big boy. So you th you think you could squeeze Reginald in there if you needed to? Reggie, would you like a suit of armor? It oh, or you just carry one around? Yeah. Oh, uh, we uh, yeah yeah I. I all, all the great fighters have had great grand suits of armor. Wait, did, did you find some? Yes, there was one in the tower. We can Ooh. go get it once we're done here. Oh, hey, hey, hold, hold this chicken. I want to hand him the chicken. I want to start marching off that way. And it would be careful. Or it may give way with your heavy weight. Yeah, I'll, I'll just more take a peek. At the top of the tower, if you fancy a climb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just to pee. Just pee. And then, um, you know, hold it, walk the whole one finger thing. I'm kind of very determined headed off towards that tower. Okay. Real quick. Uh, hey, uh, go ahead, Jericho. You said real quick. Do it. I was going to ask you if you were going for the other things in the wagon. Me? No. In fact, uh, I was going to address some of that to Dermon. Okay. Hey, uh, Dermon, on second thought, I really don't need this third crossbow. Do you, by any chance, have use for a light crossbow? I suppose I could take it. And, uh, there's a bunch of other heavy weapons in here. Doesn't look like it's much of either of our styles. Oh, no, sadly not. I prefer the simple weapons myself. Quick, clean. I agree. Hey, there's one more uh, container in here we have yet to check. Two more. I'd like to open. Wait, what? Narrow wardrobe and a tiny wood box. Oh. The liar. Oh. oh, yeah. Um, uh, Dermon, you don't happen to play any instruments, do you? There's a shiny new liar over there with some impressive looking strings. No. Do I play an instrument? <laughs> I'm gonna open the wardrobe. All right, this narrow wardrobe contains three sets of fine clothes, two sets of traveler's clothes, several pairs of shoes, a harlequin mask, and three wigs. It also contains what looks to be a climber's kit, a disguise kit, a healer's kit, and a poisoner's kit. Uh, Demon, there's some impressive stuff in here. Looks like some kind of, uh, I don't know, like something a circus would carry around. That is interesting. The head I found upstairs was uh, adorned in a similar manner to the Vistani. And I I'm saying that as I go over to the small box. Okay. Actually, that's a good time for you to open the box. Um, the tiny wooden box, when you pick it up, you open it, and it contains a deck of Taraka cards. Wrapped in silk. Ooh, boy. That's cool. Which, as you pull them out, Jericho, you immediately recognize those as a very similar deck of cards to the ones that Madam Eva used to read your future. But not... Identical. Not identical, not the same ones, but they could have been bought at the same store. <laughs> gotcha. Hey, 
Those look just like Mad Amoeba's cards. Eh, uh, could be. Didn't look quite like our cards. Hers were a good bit more worn than those. Hmm. Do you want any of these uh, kits in the wardrobe? Uh. I figure the healer's kit will be helpful in general. Uh, you can already heal, so I'll take that. Uh, no, I don't really have much of a use for anything else. I have a disguise spell already. Uh, I guess I'll take that in case Reginald needs it. He's not exactly the stealthiest, but maybe he can act his way through something. Yes, I can take that uh, poisonous kit, I suppose. That'll work. And I'll pass that to him, and I'm... I think we're done in here. Okay. All right. Are there any uh, bolts for that hand crossbow? Yeah, there were, crossbow? there were ten silvered bolts for the crossbow. Well, I'll hand him ten uh, regular bolts. Oh, cool. Also, silvered I... weapons, um, they can take the place of... Like, when a creature is resistant to non-magical weapons... A silvered weapon can act as though it were magical on a creature that's resistant to magical weapons. I lie. I give him uh, three of the silvered ones. Okay. On top of the ten that I gave him. Cool. And does the does the mask look like it has anything special to it? It just looks like a, a check. no. It just looks like a harlequin mask. It doesn't look special. Nothing, sp nothing real special. All right, so you guys turn to see Reginald doing his thing at the door of this tower. Reginald, you approach the door of the tower. The tower door is made of iron with no visible handles or hinges here on the outside. In the middle of the door is a large embossed symbol, a connected series of lines with eight stick figures set around it. The door that... Derman just walked through uh, seems to have closed itself since he walked through it. Um, so you see, I'm about to post it in the Discord and reveal it on the stream. Um, doop. Doop. And doop. And where are you, boy? There you are. You might need to zoom in on this to really get a good look. But it shows, it depicts a connected series of lines with eight stick figures set around it. Carved into the lintel above the door is the word Kazan. Capital K-H-A-Z-A-N. Oh. I'm eyeballing this door, seeing that it's pretty solid. Mm hmm. Kind of scratching the old head. I want to turn back to uh to the, the rest of the group, especially uh especially Dermot. All right, what kids? We have lost our Dermot. Oh, sorry. There it is. Mean? Why didn't you just come through here? Yes. None of those symbols are on the other side of the door. Did you lock the door behind you? No, oh, I left it open. Oh. I think it closed it. Oh, I want to... Uh, maybe you should have put a, put a rock in it or something. I could have. I want to kind of fiddle with the little center thing on the door like see if it moves in any way when you touch the door I need you to roll well actually lightning envelops the tower when you touch the door <laughs> uh, when you touch the door just extreme lightning begins to envelop the tower uh, and any creature outside the tower and within 10 feet of it, which is only you right now, Mr. Reginald, uh, right. must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. So roll a dexterity saving throw. 
Are, uh, and my question is, ooh. are you wearing okay, at least, or no, not at least, are you wearing any metal armor? Right now I'm wearing chainmail. Uh-oh. <laughs> Go ahead and roll that dexterity check with disadvantage, my brother. <laughs> All right, first one is a is a nineteen plus one. Okay, you succeed. Crap. Um, so <laughs> second one is a seven plus one. Oh, sorry, I forgot that you had disadvantage. Yep, you do not succeed. Uh, oh, you're about to take a heap of lightning damage. So stand by. Wait, I never, I never used his inspiration. Yeah. yeah, but I, I did give it. No, you can you can keep it. It's, it doesn't really work like that. Okay. So how does this work? Do I re-roll once or twice? Um, I guess re-roll twice with it. Do it again with this advantage. Um. Oh God, no! Just, <laughs> I thought no. it just canceled out disadvantage. <laughs> Yeah, it would yeah. It, it would just cancel out disadvantage, I guess. But we've already done it without. So just roll one more time. That way you get. Roll one more time. Yeah, roll one more time, and we'll see if you succeed. Crap! <laughs> it's a three plus oh, one. Oh no! <laughs> so with inspiration, you had three chances, and you failed on two, which is bad news for Reginald. Not he's just trying to get to that suit of armor, the poor guy. But you're about to take some lightning damage. Stand by for the total. All right. Oh, only God. only 20 oh. only 20 lightning damage so lightning courses down around the around the tower and courses through your chainmail searing the flesh on your chest and you take 20 points of lightning damage as it pushes you back into through the mud in a trail of of mud and as you slide right into the feet of Dermon and Jericho with sizzling chainmail on your chest Hey boys the door is locked <laughs> Sorry, you got me with that one. <laughs> I just pic just picturing it happening makes me giggle. <laughs> That's all I will I say that original are you are you okay? Yeah, <laughs> I think I'll be all right. Maybe I'll unlock it. Let me go try help. again. I want to help him up. Okay, you help him up. Uh, um, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm ground, right unlock that one. Uh, let, let me let me, let me yeah. see Wait, if it unlock it. Now. Before you head out there, the lightning is persisting. Like it's just there's constant lightning in this area now. Around the tower and stuff. Well, that's just about a lot of luck, isn't it? It appears. Yeah. <laughs> I want to glare down at the chicken. <laughs> Maybe it could have seen. Uh. But you can still see the door from where you're standing. Um, it looks like you could get up to ten feet away without the lightning striking the crap out of you, but 10 feet would be about the edge because there's just lightning enveloping this whole tower, and it seems to be continuing for, for quite some time. Um, but you can definitely still see the the embossed symbols on the door. Um, and of course, it looks like it could be some sort of combination or puzzle. What kind of check would you call that? Perception or arcana? For the solution? Um, or the... Like, any information about it to begin solving it. Let's see, let's see. Investigation? Maybe even sleight of hand? I don't know. The book don't... Trap detection of survival. Don't tell me what to do when they come to that. Um... Not intimidation. <laughs> Intimi I intimidate the door to open. <laughs> um, no, yeah, just roll... Roll an Arcana. Roll Arcana for me, please. That's a 14. Okay. Based on what you've seen thus far, obviously, 
Uh, and based on what you can you can sense coming from this door is that this door is definitely has a magical trap on it. The magical trap does not seem to have dissipated. Uh, and there seems to be some sort of puzzly solution that you will have to perform to get through this door. I see. Uh, fellas, I think it's I think it's some kind of puzzle. Yeah, so I don't, don't quite this see how I tried to turn the little fiddly bits and it zapped me. Uh, uh, this might come as a surprise to you, but it also appears to be trapped with some sort of lightning magic. Hey, um, Keith, yep. I wanna, I wanna stand Dermon about like fifteen feet away from the door, and starting with like the left little like beginning arrow thing, left, like, like on the on the symbol. Mm-hmm. The um, not the one that's at the very top, but the one to the left of that, and like following the thing down. Yeah. I want to move Dermon in those positions. Okay, so where the line starts. So you're talking about doing the field goal pose, then yeah. then do the it, dance like an Egyptian, and then yeah. do the T pose, and then do two yeah. arms down. You're doing that. Yep. Okay. Um. Do give me a quick dexterity roll just to see if you're able to do all those things in the correct order. Uh, is it a saving throw or just dexterity? Uh, just a de- just dexterity. Okay. Um. So, do I add the modifier? Yeah, yeah. Add your modifier. Okay. Uh, thirteen. Okay, you successfully do all of the positions. Um, and you you do them in order. It looks like because after you complete uh, after you complete the motions, the door creaks open. I can't believe that worked. Is the lightning still going though? Also, I have to say what Mark just t- typed in chat. <laughs> All he wrote was "Hey, Macarena." <laughs> <laughs> um, what was that question there, Zenas? Uh, is the lightning still going on? No, after you completed the puzzle, the lightning ceased. Nice. I had no idea there was a picture of it in the Discord. I did say that, though. I, it might have cut out. I don't know. Okay, I'm sorry. It's all good. I want to look towards Dermon still but there's still a little bit of arcing going on between some of the little uh <laughs> themes of the mail you did that on purpose didn't you what what do you mean did what on purpose well, it was all just a great jest and everything did you, did you know that it was going to zap it for me I did not if I had I would have told you not to touch the door so we really wolf trash. Uh, yes. Did not lie to you. Well, so what? You think there's more traps inside? I, had, I did not see any when I went in there. Nothing came upon me. I did well, fall through the floor, though. Well, almost. Yeah, but you didn't see the door was trapped either. No. Maybe we ought to be cautious inside. I suppose that seems like a good idea. Right. If the door from the outside, it was just from the inside, it just open. Right. Still, let's be cautious. I want to yeah. start stepping my way that way. I agree. You should be very careful while you guys are in the tower. <laughs> oh, you're not going um, to be with us. Uh, no thanks. I don't really feel like being struck by lightning. I normally feel safe from such a thing indoors, but in this case, I feel as though it's safer on the outside. Each their own. And and with that, I step inside. All right, you guys step inside the door. Uh, and after you've been talking for a little bit, 
as soon as you step inside the door, you barely, you and Reginald barely get three steps inside before the door closes itself back again. <sighs> the door shuts. You are now from inside. From inside, anyone standing outside could hear Reginald loudly exclaim, "Oh, come on! <laughs> come on!" Um. So we can get through whatever comes our way. Reginald, just to let you know, you are now in a dimly lit through moonlight through slits in the wall room uh, where there seems to be an elevator held by rusty chains, and those rusty chains are held by four clay statues that seem to in some way operate this elevator. Okay. I've got dark vision, so that's that's the dark isn't too much of a problem. So. Um... Can I investigate the statues? You may. Uh, I won't make you roll for it. They just look oh, like okay. they just look like clay statues. There's, I mean, you could look at them all day, and they just look like clay statues holding on to some chains. Okay. I was I was gonna um, say as investigate statues as well as asking Dermot like, oh. hey, it was in here earlier. How are you supposed to operate this thing? That I do not know. I climbed on the chains. They did. um, didn't do nothing. What'd you say? They didn't do nothing to you. No, not to me. So you were the one who seems to the last work here. I'll say up as we go. I want to try climbing the chains to the next level. Okay. Uh, you don't have a climbing speed, so go ahead and roll me an athletics check. Okay. That's a 17. Okay. Uh, 17, you are successful in climbing up to the second level. Do you step off the chains and onto the second level? Not before eyeballing everything I can on this level. All right. Dust and cobwebs fill this otherwise empty room, the wooden floor of which is badly rotted and partially collapsed. So if it doesn't look like there's much going on here, can I continue climbing? Sure. Go ahead and head on up. You got... Uh, right. your, I follow them. your rule can apply to your full-on climb. You're a strong, hefty boy, despite being singed a little bit. A little crispy. A little okay. crispy. Okay. Oh, yep, yeah, so third level, excuse me. <laughs> Time and the elements have all but destroyed this chamber, leaving a gash in the northwest wall and slimy black mildew on the walls. The wooden floor is completely rotted and has begun to fall away. Uh, Looks like some of it freshly fell away, possibly 20 to 30 minutes ago. All right, then. Is this the same floor with all the uh, the box with the head and all that? No, you have one more floor to get there. Then we shall continue. All right, I'll read the description of the fourth floor again for you, Reginald, just in case you missed anything. Unlike the levels below, this, ro- this room shows signs of recent habitation, and although the place reeks of mold and mildew, it has plenty of creature comforts, including a cozy bed, a desk with matching chair, bright tapestries, and a large iron stove with plenty of wood to feed it. The light enters through arrow slits as well as through dirt-caked windows with broken shutters. Other features of the room include a standing suit of armor and a wooden chest. Old wooden rafters bend under the weight of the tower roof, which has somehow remained intact. Mounted to the rafters are pulleys around which hang iron chains that support the tower's elevator platform. That'll do it. On this floor, I wish to disembark. All right. You disembark successfully, and the floor does not give way. And Dermon disembarks right behind you. Hey, is this where where you saw all this? Your box with your head in it and all that. I'm sorry. What did you say? Uh, This where you saw your box with your head in it and all that. Oh, yes, it's right over there. And I point at it. Right. I would I just put that there put if I were you. Uh, I assume the only reason we are here is to gather your armor. Well, right. But also, this is the only place where it looks like somebody might ought to have been living. 
Um, you said there was a wood stove and everything. Kind of, like, does it still feel warm or anything like that? Like, are, are there any signs that somebody was here soon? Uh, everything's off right now. It, the stove looks like it was used relatively recently, but it's not still warm or anything like that. Okay. And do I see the armor? You do see the armor, my friend. All right. Is it dark outside? Yeah. Okay. So my right. ability is active? It's a full moon, so that'd be a nerd. Okay. Because right, it takes pitch darkness, right? Uh, anytime dark vision is used. Oh, never mind. So yeah, you'd, you'd be using dark vision. Sorry, I thought it was pitch darkness. It's all good. Uh, I want to go over and thump the chest on the armor. Okay. Go ahead. You said you wanted to thunk it? Yeah, just, I guess, like, you would kind of kick the tires on a on a new car, kind of check it out, and kind of, you know, the whole doom doom, just kind of give it a little rap, see if it sounds like it's a, a good, solid build. Gotcha. Um, you thunk it, and you hear a thunk, 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 and it seems like a good, solid set of armor. Uh, it, it jostles a little bit when you thunk it, but it does seem like a good solid piece of armor. Jericho, while you're thinking about your dark vision, you're overcome with the fact that you think that if someone were t telling you what the contents of that wagon you were just in were, that they might have missed something. So you think maybe you might want to go back in there and look around. <laughs> oh, yeah. So me hearing the chicken uh, pecking around at its former home, I go to investigate what this chicken may have stumbled upon. Okay, we'll get back to you in just a moment. <laughs> we'll keep with Reginald for now. Just, I made a mistake in the ability to read. You ever... You, you know how... Sorry, go ahead, Reginald. I was about to make a joke. No, I was going to say, Dermot, you was right. It's, it's beautiful. I'm, I think I'm going to take it. Unless you want it. What? Unless you want it. You, you're the one that found it. No, I do not want it. A picture for this conversation, Reginald is like already in his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to take that suit of armor. So Reginald, when you try to go take that suit of armor, none of the pieces come off. You like, let me, let me, I killed it, don't. let me pull the pieces off and, uh, let me, you know, de detach some of these things so I can put it on my own body, and and none of it comes loose. It's almost as if it's magically adhered together. Uh, 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 Reginald's getting kind of frustrated at all this. Now, what what gives now? What what's going on with this thing, Thurman? You got any ideas here? Oh, I. I first assumed when I got here that it was magic or dangerous in some way. Perhaps someone could be hiding in it, but I do not know. I do not know what can, I, I anything. can I investigate towards it a bit closer to see if it has any like markings or anything going on? Uh, yeah. Go roll, roll investigation for me. And right. can I hear Reginald's frustrated shouting at this armor? Yeah, I'd say sure you can. It was right by a window, wasn't it? Yeah. Sorry. It's wow. a 12. You do not see any special markings or anything else. Uh, you know, this armor is definitely made to look as though it's something aggressive. It would adorn It would adorn a, a powerful knight or a powerful attacker. Uh, but other than that, you don't see anything special or any sort of, like, buttons or switches or magical ropes or anything you can just it feels like this this suit of armor is magically adhered as though it might it's one piece i want okay. to shout up to them hey uh boys what's taking so long i want to stick my head out the little crack in the wall or whatever <laughs> and the armor's being stubborn it's just it's just a minute what do you mean, stubborn? They won't come on. 
Oh, it tossed it out the window. Maybe it'll break when it hits the ground. <laughs> right, Dan. Right. I want to grab it and chuck it out the window. <laughs> Before we do that, let me give it a look. Um, I want to go up to the armor and I want to do an arcana check against it. Okay, boss. That's a five. This <laughs> doesn't seem to be any sort of... There, there's something clouding your judgment. There's something... Maybe it's the... Maybe it's just this... You have felt, you being the most magically inclined of the, of the party, you have felt weirdly suffocated magically in this tower as it is. Um, so it's something is clouding your mind and you're unable to get a bead on exactly what this suit of armor is but you can tell that it, there's got to be something magical about it there's no I, other reason it wouldn't come apart i want to go over to the um chest and i want to pick up the head and i want to throw the head at the suit of armor <laughs> okay okay tell me how hard you want to throw the head <laughs> um light enough so that it's not necessarily seen as aggression, but hard enough to be like, hey, I know what's up. <laughs> like, there's a purpose. There's a purpose to this head throw, but it's not okay. like, I'm doing this to be aggressive. All right. I'm just like, hey, do something. That's a very nuanced head throw, but we'll see what how the, how the armor takes it. Uh, you, roll. A head throw is worth a thousand words. Yep. So you throw... You throw the head. Um, I'm going to roll a constitution saving throw for the head. Yeah, it does pretty good. You don't break much of the skin on the severed head when you slam it, when wow. you toss it into the, the rough edges of this, or some of the rough edges of this suit of armor. Uh, some of the, Did you know you were going to say that today? Nope. <laughs> Did not. It's some of... Checking. Uh, I actually... I went back to the, for today's preparation. This tower was kind of an afterthought because I was like, oh, shoot, where did they go in that tower? <laughs> so I went back and 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 learned what was in here. Uh, so you toss the head and the you peel a bit of the skin off the cheek of the head as it hits the armor, and then it just rolls onto the ground. Um, and let's do a little random roll here real quick. What do you know? <laughs> Based on my parameters I decided before the roll, what do you know? Uh, and the head begins to roll quite quickly towards the hole in the middle of the floor. Um, and it's going to roll in unless you do something about it. Do you do anything about it? May I try to catch a fight? Roll a dexterity save. Oh, God. Step on it. Uh, um, ten. Whole ten. Okay. You roll a dexterity save... And just before the head falls in the hole, you drop down to the floor, reach your hand into the elevator hole, and grab the head before it falls to its double doom. Now, I want to look at the head okay. that I am now holding, that I did not expect to be holding, and I want to look back towards Thurman. Okay. What, what was you thinking all that? I don't know. I assumed that if the arm was magical, maybe this head was tied to it. Throwing the head of the armor may be seen as an act of aggression, possibly. But not uh, I just want to throw I want to throw the head at the armor too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let I'm just be very practical at this point. Let it rip. How hard you throw on it? Oh, extremely hard. All right, roll the strength. Strength or athletics? Uh, just roll strength. Roll up like a melee. Roll what you'd roll for your da javelin. Uh, oh, no, um, 16. <laughs> roll damage, like, if you were, thir like, roll, roll a, <laughs> roll a d10. Let's see how much damage happens to this head. Well, I, I've got the unarmed, I can do a d4. Yeah, roll a d4, we'll see if you crack this yeah. thing on the wall or something. It, ooh, it's a four. It, it's and a it's as much damage as you can do. You know what? Screw it. This is my podcast. You throw the head directly at the head of the suit of armor, and instead of knocking the armor over, instead of like 
the head bouncing off and turning into a magical, you know, swarm of butterflies. <laughs> that head breaks like an egg on the head of this armor. Splat the pieces of skull and brain and flesh splat on the wall behind it, leaving a a a snow angel of clear area on the stone wall <laughs> behind the suit of armor. The suit of armor doesn't even move. It doesn't say hello. It doesn't walk towards you, but there is a broken head all over the head of this suit of armor. The head that was in that chest is now paste on the wall. <laughs> I mean, oh. I, mean uh, I don't think we did it right. <laughs> you got another head in that box? Uh, no, sadly not. I can do All right, back so, to the uh, first plan, you Am I waiting for something coming out the window or not? This time Take I put my head my back head out again. Head. Go ahead. Uh, this time I poke my head out or whatever, as close as possible to this thing, to the to speak into uh, Jerry, and I just say, "Um, there's been a bit of a complication." <laughs> yeah, I heard some uh, dull thumping noises. Are y'all trying to whack the thing apart? Uh, in a manner of speaking, yes. I see. Uh, have you made any headway? <laughs> oh, made some... <laughs> Take a point of inspiration, you loser. <laughs> Take a point of inspiration, you... <laughs> Just take one. Oh, Just take one. <laughs> Just take a point of inspiration. <laughs> oh god. I am an ignorant man on the ground. I don't know what's so funny. <laughs> har har har. <laughs> Alright, um Oh god, alright. Uh I guess I wanna just I'm gonna I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here. I wanna address the armor. Okay. Uh I, I, uh you know, we we're gonna be getting out of here just just mere moments, really, but I really want to take you with me. See, we're trying to defeat this strong fella. He's them. We, you know, done a lot of bad things around a lot of people here. So, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to take you with me. Just, just you want more gently, and then um, uh, might be a little bit more extreme afterwards. So, uh, I want with that. I want to see if I can uh, take the armor apart again. Okay, it it won't let you pull it apart. Well, I mean, it, it's not, it's not like pulling against you. It's just you you can't pull it apart. As I'm as I'm getting, I'm pulling harder and harder, and it's just not working. All right, it's time time for Plan B. I want to just grab the whole thing and just march over to the window. You successfully pick it up and march over to the window. It's let's go in sailing. All right, <laughs> do you open the window or just <laughs> just? I guess there's no. You, <laughs> Let's just. Oh, it's just. I'm just chucking it right through, like as hard as I can. All right, from Jericho's point of view. German flew through it, so it was open. Yeah. That was like a crack in the wall or something. Yeah. He, no, he didn't fly through that one. He flew through the crack in the wall and the floor underneath. Oh, okay. That might have been in one of your times though. Where you was gone. Oh. So you chunk the uh, chunk the armor out of the window. It doesn't protest. Uh, it doesn't say anything. It doesn't shift its shape. Uh, you just chunk that suit of armor right out of the window uh, as it crashes onto the ground right in front of Jericho, all of its pieces remaining intact. Oh, God. All right, I want to poke my head out the window that I just sent a suit of armor through and uh, kind of eyeball Jericho down there. Did that help? Uh, it doesn't appear to. Uh, maybe we can throw it at the door when you get back down here. <laughs> I'm going to go check out the carriage and make sure we didn't miss anything. I'm nodding and, and kind of just, I'm very agreeing, like, yep, this is a great idea. All right, I'm on the way down. All right, cut to the wagon. Jericho, you go back inside, you look around a little bit more, um, and you find a set of copper pots and pans. Uh, you find three sets of manacles. A single shovel, 
and a wooden chest which is untrapped, and it's con it contains a gold holy symbol of the Morning Lord, three vials of holy water, three vials of perfume, two vials of antitoxin, a 50-foot coil of hemp and rope, a tinder box, a steel mirror, a sharpened wooden stake, and a spyglass. But you I think... That's pretty important information. Well, let me... You know how sometimes when you're... Well, you guys, just bear with me. You know how sometimes when you're reading a book and you're on the left page and then you get to the end of the left page and you forget that the, the text might continue on the right page? That just happens to everybody, right? <laughs> These things do happen. Sure. It's just, it's just... I just... It's just the col It's just more of the column that's on the other page. You know, I'm sorry. Uh, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna drag the whole trunk out. Okay. Oh, never mind. There's more. You also find two spell scrolls, uh, one for the spell Major Image, and the other for the spell Remove Curse. You find a map of Barovia, which shows all the locations marked on this adventure's map of Barovia, so essentially it reveals all locations to you, and a charred, yes. pa a charred page of what looks like it could be a journal. I'm going to take the map and put it in my pocket. Okay. And is everything that you just grabbed in the trunk, or is this just other stuff as well? The What was in the trunk ended at Spyglass. Everything else was just loose. Okay. Everything so that patron, you know what seemed important. Patron. Everything that was important. Everything that you said was important after that, I'm going to toss into the trunk. Okay. And drag it out. Perfect. You do that. I will be behind the pot and stuff. I am taking the perfume, though, but I think that was already in the trunk. Yep, it was in the trunk. Okay. I dragged that out. Alright, and as you do that, too. Derman and uh, Reginald are coming out of the out of the tower toward you. I uh, I kind of I'm going to check out the suit o armor. I'm just very single minded at this point. Like that armor's coming with us one way or the other. Right. Anything else going on? Hey. Nay. Hey uh Damon, get over here and help me out with this. I go and assist in whatever he needs. I'm going to open the trunk and let him peruse the vampire hunting goodies. Yeah. So, one the one thing that draws you guys is I. You guys have seen you know you know that he's a vampire. You've heard tell of a few things that that harms a vampire and you you're noticing that this is some very vampire oriented goodies. Uh but we're going to go read both you and myself for the first time what that charred piece of journal says cuz I forgot to go read it. But we're going to go read it because you now possess it. So I'm going to go over to Appendix F. We're about to read. While you are reading, in the background, you can clearly see Reginald is attempting to strangle the suit of armor. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Okay, so... The door, Reginald. Throw it at the door. So what you see is a page from a journal that looks as though it's... A entitled at the top the journal of rudolph van richten and there's a little bit a good bit of reading here so we're going to get this will probably be how we end the stream tonight okay guys so this is what this char journal page says for more than three decades now i have undertaken to investigate and expose creatures of darkness to the purifying light of truth and knowledge hero i am named in some circles sage and master hunter i am called in others that I have survived countless supernatural assaults is seen as a marvel among my peers. My name is spoken with fear and loathing among my foes. In truth, this virtuous calling began as an obsessive effort to destroy a vampire that murdered my child, and it has become for me a tedious and bleak can't career. Even as my life of hunting monsters began, I felt the weight of time on my weary shoulders. Today I am a man who has simply lived too long. 
Like a regretful lich, I find myself inexorably bound to an existence I sought out of madness and seemingly must now endure for all eternity. Of course I shall die, but whether I shall ever rest in my grave haunts my idle thoughts and torments me in my dreams. I expect that those who think me a hero will change their minds when they know the whole truth about my life as a hunter of the unnatural. Nevertheless, I must reveal, here and now, that I have been the indirect yet certain cause of many deaths and the loss of many good friends. Mistake me not! I do not merely feel sorry for myself. Rather, I come to grips with the devastating realization. I now see that I am the object of a baleful Vistani curse. More tragically, the nature of this hex is such that I have not borne the brunt of it. Instead, for worse, those who surround me have fallen victim to it. I have related the tragic story of how my only child, Erasmus, was taken by Vistani and sold to a vampire. I explained how Erasmus was made a minion of the Night Stalker, Stalker, and how it was my miserable part to free him from that fate at the point of a stake. What I have neglected to illuminate before is how I tracked Erasmus kidnap Erasmus's kidnappers across the land, or how I extracted Erasmus's whereabouts from them. In fact, the Vistani, the Vistani took Erasmus with my own unwitting permission. They had brought an extremely ill member of their tribe to me one evening and insisted that I treat him, but I was unable to save the young man's life. In fear of, for, of their retri excuse me, in fear of their retribution, I begged the Vistani to take anything of mine if only they would withhold their terrifying powers, of which I knew nothing. To my lasting astonishment, they chose to surreptitiously take my son in exchange for their loss. By the time I realized what had occurred, they were already an hour gone. <clears throat> Incensed beyond reason, I strapped the body of the dead young man to my horse and doggedly followed the Vistani, <coughs> Excuse me. the Vistani caravan through the woods, naively allowing the sun to set before me without seeking shelter from the night. Shortly after darkness fell, I was beset by undead that would have slain me had not their master, a lich, intervened and spared my life, for reason that I do not know completely understand. He somehow detected me and, with his powerful magic, took control of a pack of zombies that wandered in the forest. He spoke to me through the mouths of the dead things and placed a magic ward against undead on me, and animated the dead, the dead Vistana, and bade it tell me where I could find its people. Unfortunately, I say in hindsight, the plan worked. I found the child stealers, and my unwelcome entourage included a growing horde of voracious undead that could not touch me thanks to the lich's ward. When I found the caravan, I threatened to set the zombies on the Vistani unless they returned my dear boy. They replied that he had been sold to the vampire, Baron Matus. Something inside me snapped. I realized the zombies and the entire tribe was eaten alive. Yet the story has not ended. Before she died, the leader cursed me, saying, Live, live you always among monsters, and see everyone you love die beneath their claws. Even now, so many years later, I can hear her words with painful clarity. A short time later, I, find my, I found my dear Erasmus made into a vampire. He begged me to end his curse, which I did with a heavy heart. The darkness had torn him from my loving arms forever, and I foolishly believed that the curse had exacted its deadly toll. I wept until an unsatiable—I I wept until an unsatiate desire for vengeance filled the bottomless rift in my heart. And that's what the page says. Wow. And that, with the ending of the journal of Rudolf von Richten, we end the stream tonight. And one final thing is as you read this journal and you look up from reading the journal, you can see a wagon, a wagon that you recognize, a wagon from the Blue Water Inn approaching across the uh, kind of land bridge that took you to the tower. It can be no, none other than Erwin and uh, Irina Koliana, and we will speak to them next week. Cool? Very yeah, cool. That was a good one. Yeah. Woo. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you are enjoying the podcast, please do leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you may possibly review our show. 
Uh, if you would like to follow us on Twitter at Taint Media Games, you will find a link to our Discord channel, our server, uh, where you will find more Dungeon Boys opportunities to watch and or listen, uh, and a- the ability to hang out with us offline. Uh, as well as if you're liking the show as well, please just um, share it with your other friends. We have a good time playing D&D, and we hope that you will enjoy listening to us as well. But with that, I bid you all adieu. Uh, Please remember that we all love you very, very much. Bye-bye. Toodles. Later. All right. I have pressed that button. The stream remains. I'd like to turn my attention to the stream. Thank you so much to any of the few of you who do like watching us play D&D on stream. Mark, thank you so much for your support. Uh, Hail for popping in. I think Joe is our friend Joe. Machinist Joe slash Wondering Machinist Joe. Uh, Xenolith 2, I'm not yep, sure who, I'm not sure who Xenolith 2 might be, but thank you so much for chatting with me earlier on, and Disabled Animal, thanks for tuning in, I'm sure none of you are here now, but I thank you for that. Um, but guys, do you, do we have anything else before we end the stream? That was a good Joe, one. Joe Frosty, you missed out. <laughs> I, am, I have no words. Yeah. Uh, we will, of course, discuss offline, but thank you so much. If you want to hang out with us and you're not already a part of the Discord, go ahead and scroll down and click that link so you can join up and chat with us there. Otherwise, I will see you all tomorrow morning in about two, in about seven hours for some more Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. In the meantime, please remember, of course, that we love you all very, very much. Bye-bye. Bye.